Morning, everyone. Is anyone on the stream yet? Um, difficult to tell. But welcome, everyone, to uh, the official Bristol Pride uh, online gaming day uh, run by me and some other admins in the Bristol Gamers. And as you can see on screen, uh, we have a whole bunch of events today. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to it's going to be a sort of a, t a test, I think, because um, we had a previous uh, gaming day, which went went all right, and we learned from that. And so we've got a more fuller day, of more events today. Um, morning, David. Nice to see you. Um, so yeah, here we have uh, events today. It all will run through YouTube, so. To make it nice and easy on everyone, all you have to do is end up on YouTube, and you know we will guide you where you need to where you need to go. But basically, if we run through what we what we're actually doing today, there's going to be we're going to break up the day with different live streams, uh, hosted by me and most likely uh, GT Leon. So we'll end up doing things together, but also uh, splitting off and you know basically having a break because uh, obviously full day of streaming uh, yeah it's gonna be a tough one but what we have is um, the first few events as you see here on screen um, we've got a mixture of D&D &D and board games so if you haven't signed up for uh, either of those uh, the D&D &D unfortunately is closed because uh, Emma who's running it uh, she ran it last time she she does it regularly um, in our own group of friends so uh, if you are interested in doing D&D &D, um, and you're looking for a group uh, get in contact with her she's one of, one of the admins and basically what we're doing is uh, people who have signed up they will be doing a D&D &D today uh, we won't be part of the stream we may drop in just to say hello and just listen in just for the first uh, few minutes as they set up and get their characters together just as you know to show you what it's like but then we'll come back here and then um, Guy and Ake are going to uh, host a online board games on, uh, what's it called? Board game, uh, board game Arena. If you've never used it, it's really good. We used it last time sort of on the fly and it worked so well that, um, you know, it, it was uh, it was a good uh, test. And so it's like, yeah, let's try and use this next time. So if you want to join in with board games, we don't have a lot of confirmed people. Now, I don't know whether that's people just not uh, responding. It tends to happen with the, the old board games events we uh, we run in real life. <laughs> so if, um, if you want to join in, uh, you're more than welcome. But you will need to sign up an account. And we're going to use Zoom to uh, talk to each other. But everyone has Zoom. So so hopefully that's, that's good for everyone. So uh, board game arena, board game arena dot com uh, go there and sign up if you want to uh, if you want to join in later um, let me just check my uh, oh one second uh, JT Leon is going to join us uh, shortly let me just get the zoom details for him So yeah, um, oh, where's that gone? Lost it. There it is. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. What I thought is the same one. Where are you? So bear with me a moment. Uh, so uh, yeah, what else are we doing today? So uh, let's see. So uh, if there is any technical difficulties with audio or visual, just please just say something in the chat in YouTube. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I'm sure there'll be some things just to iron out because uh, we're still fairly new at doing these live streams, especially we haven't done one all day yet, so <laughs> it's going to be interesting. 
Uh, just to keep going with the events. If anyone wants to join any events, if I'll just go through each one, and then that way, if you want to join one of them and you want to know how, I'll just explain that now. So board games, like saying, uh, you need to sign up an account with Board Game Arena uh, and Zoom. You're going to need Zoom for that. And we'll play that for a while, little while, but I'll probably jump out uh, towards the end so I can set up Full Guys for the, the event after that. Full Guys is slightly more confusing in the way that uh, we're going to be using it on PS4, but if you have a, if you play it on PC, if we get enough interest for people who have uh, uh, the PC version, then we can talk to you to try and set up that for you as well. But at the moment, it's going to be PS4, and because it's limited to a PS4 group of four people teams, uh, what we're going to do is at the moment we've got uh, my name, my PSN name and uh, JT Leon's and there may be some others as well so we can have at least eight so four and four so we're signing to PS4 and it'll be on screen at the time to actually tell you to you know add this person as a friend so you can join their group uh, on the actual stream on this stream here will be uh, my account so if you're in my group then you'll appear on screen if you're in anyone else's that will just be you know your own thing so that will go on for an hour and then, uh, yeah, we'll have GT on Leon to uh, come in here and uh, they're going to go through interviews, music, and basically into it. They've got some uh, people to interview and in the games industry and just uh, in, in like the gay culture generally. So we'll get him on in a moment and he can discuss what that is. Um, then we've got Jackbox Games, which is always a favourite. If you've never played Jackbox Games, it's kind of like an online board game session. Uh, it's really funny. Uh, there's multiple games and it's really easy to use. So that one, what will happen there is you'll just watch the YouTube stream here. And if you want to join in with the chat and... Uh, well, basically, if you want to talk along with us, then you join in with our Discord channel, which is at the bottom there on, on the schedule. Uh, but you can find all the links either in down below in YouTube and uh, or you can go to the Facebook page where it has everything listed in the event and So yeah, that's that then we'll come back for another live stream and then after that we've got a quiz which uh, I've set up it, it should be fun and this is our first quiz uh, If you if you were around back before lockdown, um, you'll know that I was trying to set up a pub quiz uh, You know for the for the gamer group and we we're just about to start it and that's where lockdown happened. So this is kind of a proof of concept for that as well. Um, it's, it should be it should be fairly fun and um, yeah, I've made sure that the questions have a mixture of being, you know, I would say this one is, you know, difficulty is about normal. It's not, it's not super easy. So there are easy questions in there, but there are some very difficult ones as well. And it will test your proper nerd gamer knowledge so so stay tuned for that because i think that's going to be a really good one uh and then after that uh we've got dean cox who is running his weekly uh mario kart tournament so this is a weekly thing that he does uh to do to join into that you need to be uh, friends with him on switch and when he uh sets up the tournament you can jump in there uh he'll be streaming that on his twitch but it will also appear up here so again you only need to come here if you just want to watch and then we go back for a live stream uh, just to round off the day. And then after that, it's literally a kind of a free for all for just games online. So we will be playing Jackbox again because, as I say, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of games we can play. But um, other than that, um, we may play some uh, Dead by Daylight. Uh, it really comes down to what people want to do. So feel free to use the chat on YouTube if you want to, uh, you know, gather some games together or as as uh who's doing that is that who is that jl i, I think that might be jt leon but i can't tell for certain but as you can see there's like uh it might be dean <laughs> uh there is uh people putting their their codes and things in the in the chat so yeah uh the stream itself will be split up into multiple parts because we're end the stream at some point and then pick it up again on someone else's account so that way you only have to come here but just for a technical point of view it's just so that we can um, 
share ownership of this YouTube channel. So yeah, that's the day. It's the gist of the day. So now, um, oh, sorry, James. Um, so if we get uh, uh, Jonathan, uh, if you want to jump in, I will load up my Zoom. I tried to load up my Zoom. Uh, uh, yeah. So I turned it on. So if you want to join in, you can. Hi guy. So, uh, also, um, oh, may I've got a message here. Oh, okay. Uh, do you want to, let me just, if I open up the meeting. Oh yeah, it's probably because I haven't started it. That's probably what it needs. Move that. Uh, Okay, should be working now. Um, let me just uh, send this to you. Like I say, um, technical difficulties. So, <laughs> uh, let's see. Just get him in here. There we go. Cool. Already. Uh, cool. Uh, Gonna jump in. Oh, I can hear you. Uh, why can't I not see you? Yeah. <laughs> I can hear you. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, I just wanted to know before I go off on a full-on spiel and then nobody understands. So basically, uh, I was up till quite early making sure things were sorted out. And then I slept through like a bunch of alarms and then woke up at 10 like, oh no, damn. Um, so yeah, so I'm very tired and I look like crap. But here I am on the audio call. Uh, I'll be yeah. ready for two o'clock when we have our first kind of session with myself sounds queer um i've been watching the stream so i know obviously you've gone through the day um so what i'll do now is i'll just kind of explain the three segments that i've got on uh, during the day um and then uh we can talk a little bit about events or if anybody's got any questions if you could like shout them out to me and we'll um we'll answer them together about the day or anything like that okay can, um, can i just uh, david since you're talking in YouTube. Yeah, can you hear him all right? Just make sure the audios are all good. Yeah, please let me know that you can hear me okay. Um, I did want to actually uh, just, while well, that's happening, um, just want to show everyone what else is happening uh, today, uh, or at least over Pride weekend, um, because there's quite a few things happening. Um, and so, so obviously there's a lot of stuff happening today. Uh, there's also the uh, virtual family day. Uh, so if you've got the younger audience, then there's, there's stuff for them to do there. Um, but, but tomorrow is the virtual uh, dog, what do they call it? The uh, virtual dog show, uh, which is always a favorite of mine, the actual real life dog show. But uh, I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but I will tune into it because dogs, can't go wrong. I am I am really glad sorry to interrupt David. I am really glad that you carried on that sentence because I actually forgot that was the thing for a second. And as soon as you said 
oh yeah, it's the Pride dog. I was like, where is this going? <laughs> like, I, I was a bit worried for a second. I was like, um, where, where are we going with this? Then, <laughs> right, well, I David not... said that he can hear us, so that's you know good. what I mean? Oh, God. Uh, right, can everyone hear me? Yes, they can. Oh, it's working. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'll just quickly talk about the uh, the three segments I've got today. Uh, so the first one, at two o'clock, uh, you will uh, see and hear me talking with uh, two game developers, um, Dan and Sean, uh, that are friends of mine. They're both based in Bristol um, as well. And they're just basically anybody that wants to know about the kind of games industry and what it means to join in, so they, well, well, join the games industry at various levels, um, what the game industry has kind of been like during COVID and, you know, people working from home, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're going to be talking about that. And also the idea behind getting those guys in was because one thing I'll bring up with them is how uh, certain industries and even the games industry uh, is still quite, like the music industry, is still quite a kind of straight, cis male kind of environment. And so... Um, my idea of kind of bringing those in is I know that a lot of people in gamers are actually interested in maybe developing their own games or seeing how that's made. And so um, having those in kind of demystifies it a little bit. So that'll be a really, really interesting, almost like getting an insight into the industry look uh, to two people who work in the games industry right now as developers. Uh, so that'll be really, really cool. Uh, they're both really, really lovely guys as well. Uh, so that'll be interesting. And then... I have forgotten the time of the next one. What is the time of the second slot, David? So, it's really uh, annoying. So that would be uh, 4.30 for now. Uh, hi. So at uh, 4.30, uh, I have a friend of mine um, called Kaylee, uh, otherwise known as Kay Lazon. And she is a Bristol musician uh, and kind of, kind of lifelong gamer. And what we're going to talk about, myself and her, is uh, this... Uh, basically representation in in video games uh, so Kaylee is a trans woman and is a musician as I mentioned and so myself and her are going to talk about some really interesting things that we had a, a kind of uh, a short conversation about recently um, that is all about kind of representation in video games so we're going to talk about um, you know different characters that that we've kind of come across um that you know were, were kind of important to us because myself as a non-binary person and herself as a trans woman um you know representation has been thin let's put it you know to you know let's put it like that so yeah so we're just basically going to talk a lot about that uh we're going to talk generally about representation in games and how gaming for an example for kaylee has allowed her to explore identity before she was able to come out etc so that's going to be really kind of i think quite touching and heartwarming uh, session really kind of um yeah just i think we're going to touch on some really really like really really cool stuff so that would be a really interesting one for people to join at half four and then the very last one of the day at uh, half eight to half nine uh there was an original we had a couple of people basically on the back there to interview uh, sadly, two of them are from the States and neither of them are now able to make it. Uh, but on a future episode of Sounds Queer, they will definitely feature, which would be great. Uh, so for the last one, it's very likely that I'm going to uh, get on up onto Apex Legends, get my stream going as I usually have. I'll probably be playing Apex Legends. Anyone is welcome to join me on that as well. And I'll basically just be like talking about the day, um, you know, hyping up those last few events as well, getting getting that set up. And you can just pop in during them, start talking about the day, start talking about gaming, ask me anything about sounds queer, music, anything else that you've heard, heard during the day. And we could just chat for a little bit before the last Jackbox games. So yeah, that is it. They are the three segments. <laughs> Sweet. So uh, if you want any links to uh, you know join in any of the events today, uh, just come to YouTube and there should be the information here. Uh, the bottom of the program there has all the information you should need, but um, like uh, someone on the chat there saying they want to join in with the full guys, which is great. Uh, the details will be up on screen when that event starts, but, but it basically is that there'll be teams of four people. So you need to be on someone's PSN to join their group, and then you'll just be in that team for full guys. So it's going to be my, uh, my account is obviously 
going to have four in it. But I'll post on screen anyone who wants to be a team leader and uh, you know have their PSN. Um, let me just see if there's anything else. Uh, yeah, up next is uh, technically it's uh, D and D, which will be starting shortly uh, with Emma. But um, yeah, after that will be board games, which will be on here with uh, Guy and Ake. Uh, you need to, if you want to join in, you need to be part of the. Uh, oh, where's it gone? The oh, I always forget the name. Uh, Boardgamearena.com. Uh, you need to sign up an account there. Uh, and we're going to use Zoom to talk to each other. Cool. Anything else, Jonathan? Anything else you want to talk about? Well, obviously, I just kind of came in late. So, firstly, hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, welcome to Project. I guess, I guess one thing I wanted to kind of mention at the start of today was how, um, you know, we've been able to do this, this second event in September. Um, and obviously, we tried our uh, first event back in was it June or July? Which which one was it? It was July, wasn't it? Um, yeah. And yeah, we basically just wanted to 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 do another uh, like a second event, um, and we learned like a lot from like the first one. So this is actually really exciting for us because we've kind of tested out a few things with the first one, and uh, myself and you were talking about this, weren't we? How uh we want to well, obviously we're not sure in terms of the pandemic and lockdown etc when things are gonna you know when we're gonna be able to safely kind of uh, meet you know properly together and do the events at the scale that we've been doing them so this is really for us to kind of as well as doing pride day for us to see what we can do digitally and what we can do in terms of getting people together for games but online at a safe distance so um yeah, so I just kind of wanted to kind of highlight that for anybody that didn't know. We already did a day, well, we did a day back in July during, well, in relation to Bristol Pride after Pride Month. And uh, this is a kind of follow on to that. Um, I just, you know what, I'm just on a side note, I am stumped by the fact that they're doing this <laughs> this virtual uh, Pride Day. Oh, no, sorry, the virtual Pride event for this weekend. For the dogs, like, how are they gonna how are they gonna do that? I'm impressed. I, like, I imagine it's gonna be like a, a Zoom chat or something and they're just like, right, show us that... your dog. And be like, look, I can do oh, tricks. That is adorable. I know. And oh, and look, um I was just I was just looking at the page. Um let's bring it up. I mean <laughs> it is Get your great. dog on camera. <laughs> it's just I listen, I'm I'm all in support of it. It's just it's just funny, isn't it? Like I think this is the thing about like lockdown generally, and I'm not just gonna bore on about this today, but it is interesting because obviously that's one of the reasons why we're all here doing what we're doing now and the way that we're doing it. Um but it's just so funny because like I don't know, I just stop every once in a while during like lockdown with, with Zoom calls and all this, and I'm like, this is this is fine. But it's also so weird mm. because like everything has to operate this way at the moment, can and everyone's imagine, like, "Can you imagine it, if, oh. if if this all happened back in the eighties? <laughs> they won't be like, so, ah, I've, I've, already, I've already had this conversation with people where I'm like, can you imagine if we did this before? You know, people, everyone, like most people have mobile phones. We had the ability to Skype. You know, it's, it's all this stuff that we it's not even that we don't that we take advantage of, but because it's been this this slow movement for the past few years, things like internet speed. I mean, I said to you, David, last night, this is not interesting to anybody who's not really a gamer, but as somebody who games, you will probably understand anybody watching. Um, I recently got new internet installed in my house and oh my God, it gets up to like a hundred megabytes per second. Mm. And I have been living my dream. I've been like, thank you. I like, genuinely nearly shed a tear when i did the first speed tests i was like <laughs> i know it's like actually, actually it's horrible you know, like when you, you are busy doing something and it's just it can be something minor and then when the, the internet just decides to drop out to the point Don't. where you have to go and reset the box and it's like your whole day goes just like stop stop yeah <laughs> like we, we can't function anymore without <laughs> the internet it's so Stupid. But at the same time, I mean, it, it is funny because I was saying this actually to my housemate and I'm wondering if anybody watching the stream now, if, you, if you've if you had similar experiences, make sure you 
you're putting it into the chat and stuff like that because we will read stuff out as we see it don't you worry yeah um and saying how that, like saying that uh what? james is asking uh uh games have been running digitally all through covid uh through through the discord it's like yes uh technically yes uh mostly mario kart maybe some other switch games because uh dean mostly runs the runs the discord uh games but we've, we've done Jackbox every now and then. Um, we haven't done much recently, to be honest. I don't know about you, but personally, I find that um, getting kind of used to this lifestyle and it's making someone yeah. you know introverted even more introverted because that's the norm now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, so sorry, just to, just to clarify the, the Discord thing before we carry on. Um, I imagine most people watching already know about the Discord, uh, but just to clarify if you don't, we have a Discord page, obviously, uh, or a Discord server, sorry, and within that, during today, uh, we have the general kind of chat and a couple of different things, and if you want to kind of get involved in the conversation around today or the community, people will be talking on the Discord, so uh, the link is at the bottom of the screen, as you guys can see. We'll also be able to drop it into the message at various points today if anyone's curious. So if anyone is curious watching and they don't want to necessarily type out that Discord code at the bottom, uh, if you could just just message in the YouTube chat and one of us will drop it in for you so you can just go straight there. So that's a way of like communicating with like other people from gamers today. Uh, so that'd be really good. But also as well, the YouTube chat is, is a good way. Um, and also we do have our Facebook and our Facebook... Uh, messenger where we have a, a kind of facebook chat as well which you're welcome to join so it doesn't matter you know what platform you prefer to use people are going to be active throughout the day including myself and david when we can on chats on the streams um so i will say because we were talking about this yesterday right, with david uh, especially with people that come to gamers um obviously as we do as the stereotype fits we get a lot of more introverted people and quiet people what i will say today is don't be afraid to like message chat with us uh, get involved to whatever level you're comfortable with and um, because as you all know the more that you guys kind of engage and ask questions and you know obviously if you're interested to ask questions um the more that you know other people might be like oh actually that person asked a question about something that i didn't that i wasn't going to ask you know that classic so make sure that you engage in today uh you will meet new people that you might not have met before uh, and you'll also probably speak to some people that you've already met before and maybe play some games with them. So, uh, yeah, feel free to get involved. Uh, myself and David are obviously messageable throughout the day as well. If there's any kind of direct concerns, you can message us or Dean as well. Um, and, yeah, we're just going to be basically updating you throughout the day with, with events. It's going to be really cool, really fun. And obviously, at the end of it, we'd love your feedback as well in terms of, you know, events that we want to run in the future and any differences or any differences of uh yeah just differences of events and things in the future hmm. so that was kind of basically it on my end in terms of making sure people know today there's a discord there is a uh obviously we have instagram and stuff like that as well so you can catch a little bits there potentially but the main ways of chatting uh today with us are on the discord chat the youtube channel and if you would like to as well we have a facebook messenger group where some messages will be going today and you can join there as well if you use facebook as your main platform but i'm like really excited today i fall guys like can we just can we just take a moment fall guys is like really cute right i remember watching it and i've spoken to a couple friends and they've said this i was like oh, this game looks really easy i can't believe shook people struggle on this oh i was stupid oh i was a fool i was a fool dave I, Fall Guys is just, why is it so hard? It's it's, it's that weird, weird world where it's kind of like, it's hard, but at the same time, there isn't a lot of skill involved. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, I know, the luck of the draw. Really frustrating. <laughs> I swear to God, if another person during, during playing it jumps on me, this is, this is the thing. If anyone's been in the chat recently where I've talked about it, people, like, people jump on you and i do you know what i get irrationally angry <laughs> it's like i don't do you know what if anybody knows me in person besides like the you know the social political situation that we're in there's very few things that can get me really really fired up <laughs> but i go from like you know really serious topics to like getting annoyed at the fact that people on fall guys always jump on me 
at the back and I'm like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to find you. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna look up your IP address, come to your <laughs> come to your house and and shit on your doorstep. Like I am I am done. Like, like I'm like through with people. This on particular me. this particular uh, level here my friend Adam hates it. We every time we turn this on, I hate the tilting one. That's the one I hate, but he hates this one. And I died, and I was spectating him, saying, "Oh, why'd you hate this one? Just look, just walk behind someone else, and then the fruit will hit them, and it bounces right over your head. It's fine." I kid you not. The moment he started to the to, to the end of that level, every single bit of fruit hit him. Like it's like they were out for him. He hates it. It's hilarious. <laughs> I, I was laughing the other day in the chat as well, and it would be interesting to see if anybody watching the stream right now also agrees with different levels, and I want to know what your favourite levels are, um, and what levels you hate. I get we the feeling that they've actually uh, updated it with some new levels because it was so what? unfair. Because, um, you know you know the levels where they, you have, like, team games, and uh, yeah. say, say the teams are uh, disproportionate, so therefore it's, you know, unfair. Or if you're on a team where, you know, you're on a team of a bunch of idiots who just don't know how to play the game and then you lose and it's not fair <laughs> because I swear that they, I was playing it and there was all these new levels I'd never seen before, which were the same yeah. concept, but they weren't, they weren't teams anymore. They were solo. So I don't know if I just hadn't seen it before, but yeah, it was weird. That that is really weird. That would be interesting to see. I've only played like a, one of the team games once. So that'll be interesting. Um, well, what I was going to say was, um, I was laughing the other day in the chat, uh, in the Facebook Messenger chat, which I was mentioning before, uh, with uh, Andres, uh, and just how he, what was he saying about it? It was making me laugh so much. It was, um, it was the uh, the he was talking about the memory level with the yeah. fruit, you know, when, you know, like you were talking about just then. <laughs> And he was like, I hate the fruit memory level. And I was like, are you kidding me? That is the only one I can do. So like if people in the chat were like giving various opinions. <laughs> and I was like, wait, that's the only one I can do. That's and interesting that, that like, they would say it. that. It's... Like for me, I find that level the easiest because I can try and remember yeah. stuff myself. But if you're not sure, just look at the crowds around you. You know where to go. <laughs> but I've also seen a really funny uh, TikTok video of... Uh, everyone everyone in in the level all going to like you know certain squares and it killing all of them bar two which is just unheard of <laughs> oh my God. and that's all because it you know crowd mentality some people, some people on it just rely on um you know on other people's perception it is really funny because because i was thinking no i really like it because it doesn't require I guess a game, a game mechanic as heavily, you know, it requires people's actual memory skills and stuff. And that's like, right, that's fine for me. It's the, it's the jumping on me at the back that always frustrates me more than anything. <laughs> or you, um, I, or I you're just love... about to cross the line or something or jump and someone grabs you. No. Just like, ah! Oh! Break... <laughs> Honestly, do you know what, do you know what as well? We need to talk about the bullying that happens on Fall Guys. Oh because yeah. Because the amount of times I've nearly gotten to the fucking, the, the, the final line and somebody at the end of it has come over to me and grabbed me, and I'm like, "You little." <laughs> or like you know, say, the uh, the memory it's one. No, it's like you, can't, you can never take it that seriously. No, that's that's the good thing because it is <laughs> completely random off the time. But like you just did it just then. But like yeah. the memory one, and you're just standing there waiting, and someone's grabbing you, and it's like, "Get off!" <laughs> you're like, "Hey, get would you?" I know it is. It is really funny. It, do you know what? As well, the last thing I'll say on Fall Guys, and then I want to talk about a couple of the other bits today, and maybe answer any questions that are going on in the chat. Um, uh, it's so funny coming from coming to Fall Guys after the other two uh, battle well, battle royale games. The other two uh, kind of online player games that I play at the moment uh, are Apex Legends, which is like my kind of my main game, as it were, at the moment and uh, Dead by Daylight, which I've played for like years now. And it's so funny because both of those have this obviously, uh, I mean, they're, they're all have this competitive edge, but like quite intense gameplay, really just like raw and fast and you have to make decisions and people on there can be quite toxic to play against, which could be very frustrating. 
So then I come onto Fall Guys, and I remember the first couple of games I was playing, and the way I was reacting was almost like <laughs> it was almost like I was playing those games. I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck you!" And then after like the first few times, it was like, "Actually, this is just this is just Fall Guys. Like, I don't have to react so intensely to it. Like, <laughs> it's okay." It's so it's like I can't I couldn't really be like ah when all these little things were going woo woo every five <laughs> seconds. It was just like oh that's just so cute. I'll just have to let it go. Uh, I mean, but yeah, I can we can we just I'm acknowledge look how look how sad he is. <laughs> I know. I know. Do you know the animation of when like when somebody wins and then they get like knocked off the pedestal and stuff. Oh, it's sweet. It is really really fun. I'm really mm. really glad that there's like a. A game that's been made like this that is obviously it's slightly more like child friendly as well mm. it's just kind of soft there it's more platform based and actually one thing that i was thinking of before uh um you know i'll probably mention in the when four guys is on in the chat is that um, i'm really excited for like this this kind of late generation of this console and the next gen of consoles because i think we're gonna see as well as like amazing triple a titles of like games you know pretty much that look like movies that are just this huge expansive world all that kind of stuff i think we're also going to see more of these kinds of titles on a big scale where people on pc and playstation 4 me and and obviously four guys is not cross-platform yet but it will be soon um but just these kind of big games that people can join across consoles and really a couple of years ago would have been a bit of a pipe dream like we would never have Mm. you know uh, we, you know, I always think of something like even like Dead by Daylight. When I speak to my sisters who I play with, we if you were to told like us six, seven years ago that we'd be playing on an online horror game together with some of our favorite like horror icon killers mm. and we have to escape the survivors, you always have been like, you're chatting crap. Like that's just like not going to be able to be possible. Not in, you know, in the next few years. So I'm loving yeah. that in the fact that I think in the next few years we're going to see even more really interesting titles, really cool games that are not just like good games by themselves, but mean that like people like gaming people can get together and play like these huge massive online games from anywhere in the world together, which is really really cool because we have people from Bristol gamers now, don't we? Um, who have been who lived in Bristol for a bit, joined Bristol gamers. And now actually live away, like Ake, who lives in Manchester, uh, Ashley, who lives in near London. Um, and so, yeah, I, I like that, that fact as well, that not only is it the safe social distancing thing, but also that the Bristol gamer community, it's very much for people who have been in Bristol at some point, uh, may not live here anymore, but the community is kind of always there for you. Uh, and we'll always do kind of events like this, whether digitally or in person. So that's quite nice, definitely. Uh, can I pause um, you there for a moment? Um, yeah, no, go for it. Please. Yeah, just, just to answer some questions in the chat. If you want to join the Fall Guys later, yeah, there's no there's no actual limitation to the number of players we can have as long as uh, there's team leaders around for it. Uh, hopefully, you're playing on PS4. If not, we we need to deal with uh, if there is PC a lot of PC players you want to play. So, uh, but if it's uh, PS4, just basically add me as uh, as a as a friend on ps4 uh, you'll find it in the chat and um yeah there could be as you can see on screen right now there's teams of four so um it'll be uh whoever wants to be a team leader i'll put the the psn names on the screen at the time so yeah so just wait around for that uh let's just check anything else yes the colors are adorable um is there anything else needs to cover i think we're all good so uh, we will be starting board games fairly soon. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, while I'm here, I am I am liking uh, oh, this poor guy. <laughs> He's not having a lot of luck playing the game. <laughs> um, What's this on screen? The uh, the guy, the streamer playing four guys. Oh, but <laughs> I'm just gonna check. In with Emma just to see um, if at all might be uh-huh. worth just popping in. I don't know. Yeah, potentially. I mean, she may uh, be well, too busy to. Uh... Potentially. Yeah. I just wanted to ask the the stream uh, right now if there's a particular event 
uh, today that they're quite excited for um, or, you know, something that they would like to see or anything like that, like let us know in the comments below. In fact, actually, I'll just simplify the question. What event today are you most excited for? Uh, yeah, just kind of sound off below in the comments because it's obviously really good for us to know what you guys like, but also just to, just to hype up today because there's going to be some really, really cool events going on. Some really, really good stuff. So, yeah, just let us know. Let us know in the comments below. You know, like, comment, subscribe. You know, the usual. Hey, guys. It's your boy, Bristol Gamers. Like, comment, subscribe. Here's my slime video. You know, the usual. Let's have a look at what's popular on, on Twitch at the moment. It's funny because pretty much, uh, let's see, Mario Kart. Yeah, that's on our list. Uh, Full Guys, that's on our list. <laughs> We've hit all the algorithms. Hooray! Yeah, yeah. Fortnite's the only thing we don't have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was Fortnite that that started this whole battle royale thing, and then of course Apex is another one. And you're right in the way that you know when I usually end up playing uh, multiplayer games, I just can't, I can't deal with the stress around. Um, you know, it's just like you against another team, unless I feel like I'm good enough. To be at their level, because and then Fortnite was terrible when it first started. It's like that's the reason I stopped. It's like I'm never gonna win this. <laughs> Just being frustrated. Yeah, but Full Guys, yeah, uh, Full it, Guys is great. Yeah. Well, I like that. You know, um, I mean, you guys will you'll see me play Apex later, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that and. Anybody who's fans of Battle Royale games, especially your first person shooters, uh, that'll be really interesting to you guys. I'll jump in and we'll chat a little bit. Also, if you're into Apex or you don't know much about it later on today, um, I will be chatting just about like a little bit of the lore because I've really kind of got in a little bit invested into the lore of the game because it's really, really interesting, especially with some of the characters. So we'll have a chat about that. Um, but yeah, with, with games like Apex, uh, when I first started, it was the first first person shooter game of that scale that I played. The only other games I played were that were first person shooters but like Bioshock. So like this was it was a shock to the system. Hey puns. Um and I remember just kind of playing yeah Apex for the first time and I was absolutely terrible. I was just so bad. Um whereas now I'm you know I don't think I'm too bad. Like I I could very comfortably play the game. Um and you know, if all if anything goes wrong, I just blame my teammates. <laughs> I just, <laughs> it was them. It was they didn't do the thing, you know, the usual. So you know, it's never my fault. It's always my teammates. So yeah. So in the in the chat, um, obviously today during the events, uh, you guys can can feedback and chat to each other. Uh, I just want to reiterate as well that we have that Discord and the Facebook Messenger chat as well, if you'd like. But the Discord chat today is where you can kind of talk to each other. The Messenger chat will probably be posting updates on there to events and anything like that. Uh, we do have an Instagram as well. You can follow us there if you'd like to. Uh, but mostly where everything's going to be today is, you know, is going to be on this YouTube channel. So if you're interested in most of the events today, I recommend just having YouTube on in the background. Go about your day. Um, basically just plug into it anytime that you, you're ready, but just have us on in the background. We have a full program of stuff today, back to back. By the time the end of the day has come, me and Dave are going to be absolutely cream crackers. So, you know, let's... let's I, I'm still not mentally prepared for the day. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm like, oh God, no. No, it'd be great. Uh, we'll just be me and David like, uh, and Dean as well later on, uh, jumping backwards and forwards into events. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. I mean, I don't, um, know, I don't know about you, but, but I, I'm, when you know you see people say, uh, you know, they're introverted and uh, you might look at someone and say, well, you don't seem that way because you're, you're talkative and things like that. I find that, you know, there, there are different levels of different types. And for me personally, it's like I can I can manage, you know, live chats and obviously the let's say like at Kongs, you know, being that person all day who's, you know, you know, trying to help everyone. But by the end of the day, it's just like that energy level is just used up through that day. And then it's just <laughs> like, right, don't talk to me for a week. <laughs> yeah. 
I hear you. I hear you. Well, I'm like I'm the I'm the opposite way around. So, I mean, if this is a this if this has been a useful thing in my career and in some of the circles I run in, because I am you know truly at heart I'm an extrovert, and so I do get my energy from talking to people. But in the same breath, after a while, I am exactly the same. I have like a uh, you know a mini comatose moment where I'm like, please nobody speak to me for months. Uh, I'm going to keep my distance. This is before lockdown, and you won't hear from me. I'll become a hermit for like you know a year and a half. So, yeah, even I totally get that. I'm, even if it's just that's like great. meeting up with a what? small group of friends, like I'm all I'm all happy and you know excited to do that. And but then literally after a few hours, I start to get that sort of nagging <laughs> feeling, feeling like uh, I just want some some me time now. <laughs> Um, you know, I fight for it, and you know, so I appreciate everyone's company. But you know, if I do get like that, that's why. Oh, see, I'm I'm the opposite. In that, if I I really do enjoy uh, kind of time on my own, and that's something that like during university I had to like really develop, um, especially when I had my own flat for a year, and that was like, oh, I just loved being on my own, and I really developed it. But if I am on my own for like too long, I get really like like twitchy <laughs> like needs social interaction like it's really really funny um so but obviously you guys i don't think i've ever seen me in that state where i'm like i need to talk with people now i'm losing my mind but that's why i know i'm, a, I'm definitely more extroverted because i yeah i'm just always waiting to uh, potentially talk to people and to engage with them and if i don't talk to other people in some way digitally or in person i will probably lose my mind pretty fast um so yeah oh, what i wanted to ask well, what i wanted to say about today is obviously we talked about full guys we talked a little bit about the streams that i'll be doing for sounds queer um uh, we've got the board games coming up soon uh which we'll be able to explain just before time as well and go into a little bit of that uh and we've also got the D D event going uh during the same time uh we also have the jackbox game so what what Jackbox games are we playing today? That's what I want to know. So, so the usual way that we play Jackbox is uh, we stream, we'll stream it on YouTube, and we'll have a uh, like an actual uh, chat going on in Discord. So, if you want to join in, uh, mm -hmm. you know the chat. But basically, anyone can play. Uh, all you would need is uh, your phone because it runs through your phone, so you don't even need to own, own the game, which is great. And mm -hmm. uh, on screen, you'll have a, a lobby. Uh, ID come up so you put that in your phone and then you can just start playing all the questions come up on screen uh, There's about a four second delay for the stream So it should be fine as long as you pay attention to your phone and then the games we play uh, If you've ever played it before we we'll probably end up playing the favorites such as uh, Quiplash uh, uh, Murder Trivia Party Or some of the other ones Oh Bloody hell, you put me on the spot. I have no idea. I've totally forgotten the name of everything. Uh, I've, I've basically got about four box sets. Uh, do you know what? The one I don't have is one of the latest ones with uh, Drawful. I really want to play that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, but yeah, there is another one. Let's see. Quiplash. Uh, chat, help me out. Uh, <laughs> what's the one we always play? No, genuinely, I'm not... I'm not just trying to be like facetious. I've forgotten the names of all of them because I, to be fair, I've only actually got Quiplash myself, um, but I've I've played the others when other people have had them. Um, but it doesn't matter anyway. There's there's like various different games. Um, but yeah, so if 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 people have not played Jackbox before or have not played different games, um, they're a load of fun. They're basically just a set of party games where they use. They use like wit or drawing skills. They're all really kind of like funny. Quiplash is one of my personal favorites. You always get some some absolutely stonker of answers. <laughs> They're just like some some people's humor is just like wow. Yeah. This is I mean, that was an answer on the edge. Uh, but sometimes <laughs> you get like really punny answers as well. Um so, Russ, if you're watching the stream, oh, I'm gonna expect on, a good Yeah, where is he? <laughs> Russell, where I'm are you? Are, are you good, here? I'm gonna expect a good pun from Russ. Like it needs to be done. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's here's the Jackbox stream. Uh shows you how it works. So there'll be uh you go to jackbox.tv, you put in whatever code it is, which is up in the corner here. Hit you have eight players. 
And then he doesn't have that many, but uh, you can have eight players plus the audience. So literally anyone can play anywhere in the world. There is no limit to the number of people. So it's it's just awesome. So they're choosing their, their players here or they're, they're typing in all their answers at the moment. And then they come up one by one. And then because it's made by the audience, it's so funny. Oh, by the way, James. So where is it? No, James. Uh, I'm not sure if it's James or someone else. Uh, worth no salt. Where in the world are you? And like, what time is it? You're saying that you're going to have to stay up all night. Where, where are you? Uh, Russ is on his way to Dean's. Really? Oh, okay. What, <laughs> what is going on? Hmm. I can't see the chat yet. I'm actually just getting the screen up now, so I can I can oh, I see is, and hear uh, what's going on. And slightly quicker so I see it but yeah so as you can see here whatever question that was I weren't paying attention um there's the answers and people vote for it and that's how you win points so that's quiplash but yeah I wonder if there's any other streams that show the other ones I'm thinking of <laughs> it's uh what is it uh the robot rap battle um I really like the t-shirt one this one uh but a lot of people don't oh, like that oh yeah one. you do like that one don't you I know which one you mean the t-shirt one I don't think I've ever played the t-shirt one. It, let's just say, you know how like when we're saying that the answers can be a bit over the top? Well, yeah. last time we played it, Matt, if you're here, right? <laughs> I'm not going to say what you made, but oh my god. Yeah, it would not be suitable for online viewing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, listen, it's going to be online, so, you know, that's that's the other thing today. We are relying on y'all playing. Obviously, do like swear if you are and be as involved as you want. I'm not going to censor you, but also bear in mind that this is a public stream, and there's going to be lots of people coming in today, um, which actually might make you more outrageous. So maybe I've just made it worse. But uh, please don't do us do us anything that'll get us banned from Twitch. Like, <laughs> I think I'm or already you, doing you. that by showing. Uh... Um, you know, copyrighted things all over the place and music, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like is, there is no like way what we I could do. ever monetize you anything I, I stream. It's just like, this is what I do, just use my very talented friend's music, which has, you know, been given direct uh, copyright access by me, and YouTube doesn't flag them, so it's great. It's like, aha, screw you. I've got, I've got um, a question around that. If if someone would say, say if I used your music, like, yep. and it copyright flagged it, would you get a message saying someone's done this, here's their stream? Uh, I have had that before, yes. Really? Um, it, yeah, well, it depends on how basically, it's it's like a, it's like a music industry thing. So if, obviously uh, anyone can feel free later to ask me about this, I think, especially in the Apex chat where it's more like chill and whatever. Uh, but yeah, so in, in a short answer to, to that, um it, it's to do with kind of content id logging mm. etc so some of my friends have content id this stuff and you know have it all signed up in the right way some of them don't um but essentially as long as i've got their uh kind of permission with stuff and the platforms don't flag it then that doesn't tend to be a problem um a lot of my friends as well they're at various kind of levels of musical success uh, but nobody signed to, for example, a major label. Everyone signed to at the most like an indie label. Um, so that kind of helps things as well because when you're a, a DIY artist or when you are an indie artist, you're or, you know part of an indie label. Um, they're not as heavy on like I need to copyright this because it's worth you know money every time someone streams it. You know, just like very like nobody can use this, <laughs> which is very much like a major label thing. Uh, yeah, so I have in the past had like people had um, messages come through and be like, um, "Such and such track has been flags being used here," and I'm like, "Oh, cool! <laughs> like, that's interesting." That's um, interesting. Yeah, I I had, uh, when, when my track "Indigo Child" picked up from my most recent EP, I had uh, had it flagged a couple of times for people using it, um, and then I just messaged these people. It was actually on YouTube, funnily enough, um, and I messaged these people uh, to be like. Hey, just letting you know and giving you access to use the track, blah blah blah. Um, so yeah, there are there are ways around it, definitely. But it's um it's it's actually kind of sweet getting to a point where people just like <laughs> people use your track without a license. <laughs> it's like ah, thank you. I feel I feel honored. 
Um, <laughs> do you know what? I get a lot of that. In fact, from you as well on TikTok, people saying, "Can you can you use oh, my yeah, music you in your posts?" You do because people don't people like steal your posts, Dave. Oh, all the time. Um, like I, I, I I'm beyond I'm it now. It's like I I was having a problem with it. You can't stop them. And it, it's that copyright thing of just like in the end of the end of the day, it's your content around the world, even if it's not mentioned. It's annoying, but there's nothing you can do about it. So you know, I watermark everything now. But still, people who crop it out, you know, not much yeah. you can do about it. There's a really bad thing. I mean, just just to kind of briefly to mention that there is a really bad thing, and I wonder if anybody kind of watching the stream now knows about this as well. There's a really kind of bad thing in uh, the industry generally with, I, I see it all the time on social media, where a page of some kind sees some art and instead of sharing it, um, they will download it themselves or it's on another platform that's that's not just shareable, say it's on YouTube and they want to put it on Facebook. And they'll download it instead and then upload it on their own page and then won't credit the artist. And it's... Um, I don't know. In my personal experience, it is getting slightly better. Like people are are more likely now to tag the artist, etc., and give them credit. And people in the if not people in the chat are like credit the artist, you pig. You know, okay, maybe not you pig, but you know, you get the gist. <laughs> oh, they um, can they get funny though. It. They were like, you oh, swine. Um, but yeah, so I it is there's a real big like kind of uh, yeah, like a, a big theft problem with like uh, music and and art and stuff that people create. Well, the thing I find that's really annoying is is going through the official channels to try and resolve something is is takes more time than sometimes even making the post. Like the the hoops they make you jump through, the forms you have to fill in, the time you have to wait for a response like mm, "Nah, we're not going to do anything." And it's like you know, I spent I spent an hour forming that, and then so of course the next hour someone else steals it. So yeah. Like the amount of time, that's why I've just given up. Basically, I just defeatist now because, you know, I tried, but people are going to do it, like, and they're going to find a way around it as well. Well, I think, I mean, obviously, I don't know if this is useful for you. I'm sure you've been trying it. One thing I've found when when little bits of that have happened to me is, I mean, at the end of the day, it's your property and you can do with it what you want. Mm -hmm. But having that attitude of, hey, I know that you've taken it. I see you, basically. Um, and then just put, you know, whether they recognize it or not, you know, messaging on that that chat and be like, hi, this is my art mm. or this is my whatever. Feel free to follow my page because this is actually mine. Yeah, and, I, I do that know, sometimes. Even, and some people, again, it's a way 90 of percent of people oh. either have just shared it and didn't know, you know, don't know who you are or they uh, just don't understand it at cook. Then it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I'll try. I'll try my best to like tag That's you and things. But there are that small amount who either ignore you or go like, nah, I don't care. Or I've had one person, they were adamant. They were just saying, no, it's your stuff is a meme and therefore I can share it. I don't need to talk about you. It's like, that's really rude because oh, you're talking yeah, to me. Oh, yeah, me about that. And I was like, that's not how things work. Yeah. That's like any like people who pretty much invented the intellectual property rights and all that kind of stuff are like turning in their grave they're like no <laughs> that's not how it works <laughs> <laughs> like that's not how it works and it's like they, they <laughs> found a really nice post yesterday and i shared it with everyone uh in my story which was stolen and put on tiktok so i shared the tiktok of that it was really nice yeah. and i was saying i actually put on the post i don't know who originally made this but it's beautiful i love it and of course, these people are hmm. saying, do you know who that is? Nope, no idea. All I know is that guy posted it. I don't know if that guy stole it or if I don't know if, you know, he found it somewhere. You know, you don't know if it's malicious, but, you know, at the end of the day, I want to show it because it's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> I get you. Well, that, that's exactly, exactly it. It's about being like, wow, I love this by this artist. And the good thing now is obviously with uh, people posting things on Facebook, whether it's music or, or something else, that they already have like the the share options etc on facebook now are just a bit better so now when somebody shares something it's not that difficult to be able to find the original source um you know page which is which is good now i'm kind of interested to see how instagram is going to get slightly better at that because i think it is slightly behind facebook with being able to trace like where things have come from 
etc and people not tagging people and all that whereas facebook it's just it's actually easier to just share something uh you know than to um yeah it's easier to to actually just share something on facebook than to like download the asset again you know and have that there and be like oh i uploaded this it's mine <laughs> whereas on instagram that's the only thing you can do because the share options are a bit squiff to say the least yeah um, well, the, the what I went so, through with Instagram is it needs to be an identical post, otherwise they can't do anything about it. So if someone's edited it, you can't do anything because it's not exactly the same post. It's ridiculous. The thing right. is, that's that's not true either because well, yeah, obviously no. it depends on different. Um, depends I have on different to stop you there because that's it's good. it's time for board game. Well, no, it's not it's not time for board oh. games. I'm thinking it's D and D, isn't it? Well, yeah, the D and D event is starting about now, and then board games is starting in half an hour. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, I actually, I did, <laughs> it's me, it's me not paying attention. Um, uh, I did actually get uh the confirmation from Emma that they have started, and I, I, I think it's not worth jumping in there at the beginning because they're, uh, well, at all. I think just because uh, obviously they're st just be busy talking, we'll just be watching the screen while they're talking, so <laughs> they just get get in the way of us talking. So, um. So I don't think it's worth jumping in, but it is happening. And like I say, if you're if you're a fan of D and D and you're looking for a group to play with, uh, Emma does it on a regular basis. So uh, mm -hmm. she's one of the admins on uh, Bristol Gamers. So just just find her a message her saying, you know, like to know more. Um, for board yeah. games, I did post the uh, Zoom information um, for the board games that's coming in half an hour. Uh, Again, I brought up the page here, boardgamearena.com, if you want to join in. Uh, I think there's five of us now. Uh, so there's definitely five confirmed. I think we're going to split the team into uh, six and six if we actually did get the full 12 people who signed up for it. But um, I don't think that's going to be the case unless more people join in from the chat. So um, there should be space for everyone, what? I think. What board games are you playing today? That's what I want to know. Good point. Because board games um, are wrong. This is kind of why this is kind of why um, I I sort of asked Guy and then Guy also suggested Ake as the people to uh, sort of run it on the day because uh, they 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 have better knowledge than I do about board games and how to run them and the rules and things so um, yeah I'll leave up sure. to them uh, I know Colt Express is one of our old favourites from actual board game oh. day uh, yeah yeah. I can't remember. Uh, there was, uh, I think it was Yahtzee or, or, oh, what did we play? I can't remember. I've never the other played games. Yahtzee. That's funny. So I'll have to, I'll have to watch that. We basically, <laughs> we basically the that? way that we're thinking about it is we're going to start off with something simple, just to get things in the uh -huh. swing of things. Something you know, simple and short, and then we're going to a, a longer game, something like Colt Express. And then because I have to uh -huh. jump out later on to sell full guys. Uh, the gang will just, you know, continue playing. It, it, even though it says it's from uh, eleven thirty to one, it will it will run as long as it needs to run, basically. So it will probably continue going if people are around to, you know, keep playing. Oh, here he is now, just saying. Uh, full house, yeah. uh, Yahtzee, Shot, yeah. Colt Express, and uh, if there's enough werewolves, I'd like to play werewolves actually. The only problem is you, I have to hide my screen. <laughs> Don't oh yeah <laughs> or they could just like they could promise to not look it's like oh. i'm not gonna look at the screen promise mm. well well that's the thing with the quiz later i just just point out you know you're probably thinking how are you gonna run a quiz i could just google it well the, the thing is uh the london gamers do a lot of uh, uh online quizzes now and it basically it's just for fun like usually there would be a prize or something like that but that's not the case and this is just literally to test your knowledge and um you know it's a bit of fun so if you go google stuff you need to ruin it for yourself but uh the way that the way that they tend to do it is they make you can either play on your own or you can play as a group so some people like to like you know make their own zoom chat and like four people and yeah they, they quiz it up i don't think it's worth that for the questions that i've got that they're, they're if, if you're a typical sort of nerdy person you you should do pretty well and it's just for fun and I try. I tried to make it a bit generic for everyone. It's got. It's, I think it's good. Yeah, it's got a few uh, gay questions in there. It's got a few. Uh, it's mostly gaming. Did you 
Did you just say it's got a few gay questions? Yeah, gay themed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Remember, guys, I was, I was making it, and, and you know what? It's really hard <laughs> to find. It's really hard to find questions that are gaming related, but also you know have some sort of queer connotation. It's like, do you know how hard that is? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I just love, I just love that. It's just a funny phrase. I mean, I use all stuff like that all the time, but it's like gay this question content. Is so gay, <laughs> the gay content. Um, oh, one thing I was gonna say about today. Wait, I've actually just forgotten it. It's on the top of my mind. Well, uh, it's at the front of my mind. Now it's gone. Um, you were going to no, say? No, I've forgotten. I've forgotten it. No. Oof. Um, (laughs) whatever i had in my mind just then has gone so (laughs) sorry for making that slightly awkward and like forgetting where i was um oh you were just talking about uh the board games yeah um and obviously we've mentioned the other events going on today uh oh i wanted to ask a little bit more about the uh mario kart tournament just kind of do you know uh, that that is weird kind of break break that down that is really weird because i was just bringing up twitch and I just chose Mario Kart. Uh, oh. <laughs> there you go. Great so, uh, Mario Kart um, is uh, it's actually a weekly thing which Dean runs on Discord. And uh, it's basically a tournament. And this is perfect, actually. This person here is playing online. So this is what it looks like. You basically come into a lobby and your little me characters just wandering around. And then you can just chuck things like, yeah, well done. And you know, just like really generic <laughs> phrases, like "Oh, you're gonna get it," <laughs> and uh, the, yeah, it would just I'm be a sorry, tournament. Did, did fucking Mickey Mouse just enter the chat? Like, oh. what the fuck was that voice? <laughs> oh, oh hey, how are you doing? <laughs> hey, sorry. Continue. Oh my god, that was so disturbing. Please never make that noise again. I'm gonna talk like this the rest of the day. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so sorry, you were saying about Dean and, and the, the kind of Mario Kart tournament because I think that's something like people have been really engaged in. So, uh, well, the more I... so tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so, so they, they play it um, weekly, they do tournaments and uh, slightly later, so 7.30 onwards. And uh, they tend to play, as far as I understand it, they, they tend to play just one big tournament and then, but today's probably going to be like... Um, uh, as many as they can fit in with the time. I played mm-hmm. it recently with my friend Lewis and uh, just a bunch of my nerd friends, and it was it was really good. It worked really well. Cool. Um, and uh, and you know <laughs> when you play it, when I had um, when I had it on the screen at uh, Kong's, and then people jump in to play. You know, you got the varied sort of like people who have never played it, people who are experts at it, and then the middle ground people. Yeah, it's very rare that I, I get to I play it with, with a load of people who are experts. So it was hard. Like, oh, I'm good. No. Like, I... I'm good at Mario Kart, but it was hard. <laughs> uh, oh no! Do, it, do you know what's fun? I mean, I, I've gotten to point like, especially with like games like Mario Kart, etc. I don't even pretend to be good. Like, I like start, and I'm like already crashing into a wall, and I'm like, well, this was a good start, you know. <laughs> and I see like other people just like trailing ahead of me i'm i'm not i'm not ashamed to admit that i totally rely on those (laughs) power-ups like when i'm like last and it's like would you like to throw a a turtle shell and i'm like would i you know it's totally (laughs) would i (laughs) would would i oh what little old me i mean i suppose so i just like causing havoc for the other players like that's like that's do you know what that just reminded me let me just quickly come back to this i was uh speaking with um annie who is part of the, the kind of Bristol Gamers chat, and she's a uh, close friend of mine. And we were chatting about Fall Guys, and I just re- just recently was like, oh, so you you play Fall Guys, yeah? And she was like, yeah, I really love it. She's like, but sometimes, if I'm, like, not doing very well, I, like, start to, like, sabotage other people. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, I just grab them, or I push them off the edge as they're trying to, like, get through to the last bit of the map. So and she I'm trolls like, people, great. <laughs> Yeah, she basically trolls, and I was like, who would do this? Also, that just reminded me, I want to know people in the chat who are watching this, and I want to know from you, Dave. So this is putting you on the spot. Mm. This is putting you on the spot. Are you ready for this? Mm. Do you, did you, when you played The Sims, 
Did yeah. you kill your characters in horrible ways? Of course. <laughs> no! I, I miss, I miss the day when you can put your sim in the water, take away the stairs. Or no, I used I to do that because no, I, I always do the thing where, where you where you bring up death. So I actually made a character just to kill him, and <laughs> I made like a house, a nice house, and then I slowly start removing all the windows and then all the doors, and then I took away the floor. <laughs> put the baby in the oven. David says yes. David, I'm just <laughs> David, David, you put a baby in the oven. I can't. I can't go. <laughs> I right. This is this is something that's really disturbing, right? Well, it's it's, it's not that disturbing, but it's kind of funny. I get it, but because I got to the age of about it must have been like it must have been when I was in college, sixteen, seventeen, and I was speaking to different friends about The Sims at various points that would come up in conversation, and of course, one of the first things most people would mention would be like, "Oh, isn't it so funny how you used to be able to like take the stairs away from your sim?" And I was like, "What?" And they were like, well, you know, when you used to, like, kill your sims in, like, all these dramatic ways. And I was like, I never did that. <laughs> and all these people were like, aha, you're so funny. And I was like, no, I never, well, you I know never the joke did is, that. And I was like, wait, why would you kill your sims? Yeah, What's but you know what the on? joke is? Now what you said that, you unless you get an original old game, I'm pretty sure you can't do that anymore. They took all that stuff out of it. Uh, well, no, 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 they didn't. Oh, well, actually, it might have been Sims 3. That I played and that didn't work. Basically, here's John. John hear a John hear a tragic gay story right here, right now, right here, right now on the stream. <laughs> I on I think it was the it might have been the Sims three. I on the Sims three because you know I like to live my fantasy of actually having a partner. On Sims three, I married a Sim and it was great. And we lived together and it was like, oh, this is beautiful. Me and him against the world, all that. Anyway, so I married this Sim and it was great. And he was living in my house. We had a flat together, and what I didn't realize about Sim, I think I'm pretty sure it was a Sim story. What I didn't realize about it is how they'd made the uh, skill interaction more intelligent than it was before. Where like if somebody didn't have a skill, it could have like more detrimental um, impacts if they tried to do something without a certain skill level, which I thought was really clever. But I didn't realize this, and when my Sim who didn't have a mechanical skill. It didn't have a high mechanical skill. My 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 husband, I should say, didn't have a high mechanical skill. Um, <laughs> he tried to fix a, a, a stereo that had broken, and oh my god, I'm just seeing this in the background. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to stop. <laughs> Well, if you've just joined our stream, um, no, we're not sadists. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so in this, so, so, this is, so this is so this is the tragic bit of this. So imagine that I've got this partner and it's all going great. I'm like, oh, oh partner, could you please? Oh my god, no! <laughs> Why is the baby crispy? Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> Leave that there. I can't. No, that's so bad. That's really bad. Um, yeah. So with um, yeah, so I so I have this partner. They're like about to fix the 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 stereo, the boombox or whatever. <laughs> and and literally because of this skill thing, they didn't have a high mechanical skill and they elect they died. They like they electrocuted themselves and died. And my character, so my sim that was me, as it were, was walking around the house like crying, sobbing, grieving yes. for my virtual fucking husband. And I was just like, that's not okay. Like I'm not I'm not okay with that. Like, well, I'm just guessing because this is what happened like, to me. Why, like, I'm not lucky in love virtually or, you know, in real life. <laughs> like, this is just insulting. Yeah. What's going on? I remember making, like, myself several times, always looking slightly different in The Sims, and then just doing that thing of, like, oh, I'll just live my life as I would, make a nice house, have some nice friends. And, you know, you try and set them up with people. Like, you might make, yeah. you know, some fake person to, to set them up with. And um, and they would always just be like, yeah, 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 go on, get together, get together. Oh, don't say that. And it's like, now I hate him. And it's like, no. Uh, and it's like, oh, hello, Mavis. And it's like, no, not her. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> but then I would end up You're playing like... like <laughs> I would end up like making like another version of me and restarting it. But of course, it's a town. So then there'd be two versions of me who live in the same town. 
and I'd go away for a day, come back, and he's like, oh, I made a friend today. Oh, they're coming round. And he's like, no, you've made friends with yourself. <laughs> I... I can I can I can actually one up that I've done that on The Sims Four. It was about maybe a year ago, and it was when I first started playing. And I did the same thing because I had, um, I did. I had I like I like recreating things on on The Sims a lot. So like I had myself in the solo flat that I was living in at the time. So I like tried to recreate my flat as much as I could, and then I also made my like family home back in Liverpool with like my sisters, my mum and dad. And so I like tried to recreate all the rooms in the same way. Um, so basically, in my town, I had you know one house that was the family house and one house that was that was me living on my own. But it's like two versions of the same character. And then at one point, um, I'd left because I was controlling. Like, <laughs> it sounds it sounds really macabre. I was controlling um, like my like my mom and dad characters and making sure their goals were fulfilled and stuff like that. And they kept going to like a local park or something, whatever, to, to, to get out the house. And my character, and this is no joke, it was disturbing. My character at one point, I come back and I see like little interaction things coming on. Like, oh, your character's like falling in love. Your character's chatting or playing with someone. And I go, I motherfucking go back onto my character, which I haven't been on in ages. <laughs> They're usually just there like around my mom and dad if they go to places. And I'm fucking chatting up myself. <laughs> I'm flirting fully with this other version of my sim, and I'm like, Do you know what? This is not okay. Yep. Like, I'm. <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> you know what it is? It's exactly it's called... what, I what it was. Me. I put, I put flirty on both of the characters, oh. so having, so having them in the same room as each other was just like fucking, <laughs> cast, you know, casting over me and casting over me. It was just not good. So I come back and I'm literally fucking narcissist. <laughs> Just like you know, falling in love with myself, it was a it was a whole thing. It was, a <laughs> it was just it was just not good. I see um, Dean's joined us oh, in the chat. Hi Dean. Um, yeah, Dean will be running the uh, Mario Kart event later on. Uh, we were just saying earlier, Dean, that you know all the links and everything. You can go to Discord to join in the chat with everything going on. Um, he's asking, can uh, everyone just let him win? Surely, after doing it. As a weekly event, you should be pretty good at it by now. <laughs> oh, stop trying to steer the path. <laughs> well, surely as the person that hosts it, you should well, be able to Well, let's just say, I mean, I uh, you know. You've been challenged. That, that, you better win the challenge. Like, no, we, we, we're not going to go easy on anyone, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to be easy on me. <laughs> like, if I was to ever join it, because I'm like, I'm crap. Um, oh, this was oh, funny. I was going to say... This was funny when when, when I was playing it with my friend Lewis, and people would get get to choose a level, and then it, as you'll see, it will randomly choose which which of those levels you're gonna play, and like four of them will all choose Baby Park, which is up there, and it's just like it's like no, stop choosing it, and then of course I choose Rainbow Road just for a laugh. So, oh my god, Do you know what's really funny about Rainbow Road <laughs> is I because I only play Mario Kart maybe like once twice a year, I I forget what it is until it's like mentioned or uh, because basically as soon as i hear the name rainbow road it's game over i'm like i want to play that one it's called rainbow road and then i see other people who've played mario kart around me like really you want to play this one and i'm like yes it's the hardest it's called rainbow road. and do you know and that in, in the switch version in, in Mario Kart 8 so there is there is four rainbow roads i think it is <laughs> They were just like, ah, oh, sod it. It's just it <laughs> put loads in. Oh my god, I, I Rainbow wouldn't be able to Road is the what, devil. what I was going to say, I, I remembered what I was going to say before is hmm. for anybody watching, um, for pretty much every event they'll be able to, uh, it will either have the party oh. chat, so all guys, whoever's hosting that, which will probably be Dave, um, oh. it will have the, the party chat if anybody wants to join on PSN. Um, and then that will be being broadcast. So bear that in mind. But also bear in mind that for any stream, um, if there isn't that party, that either myself or David will most likely be on and will be almost acting like commentators. So you can interact with the stream, interact with us, we'll feed back with you. Um, and also basically we'll just, I, I'm very excited to do that for, um, for Jackbox. Like I'm very excited to not even play Jackbox, but to watch other people just insult each other and we'll make a million and one jokes about russ and it'll be great and i'll just be i'll just be cheering everyone on like 
<laughs> no, what because what you'll hear in the streams, just to clarify, for some of the streams, because obviously they're kind of closed, um, you might not hear, uh, for example, in the Mario Kart one, you might not hear uh, the audio being broadcast. So basically, we're just going to be there and we're, um, we're going to be reacting to stuff. Oh, that's great, Dean, uh, if Russ is coming to yours, because that means that we can insult him on your Mario Kart stream. So it's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, so what? So every event day is going to have either myself, David, or a combination of both of us, or the party chat, hopefully, um, where we will be uh, yeah, chatting, and you guys can chat with us, and we can engage with the stream. If you want to be involved in the game, you can obviously get involved with uh, the Discord chat or whatever, and event details will pop up throughout the day in the YouTube chat, or you can just message us directly and we'll get you all set in. But if you're new to this, uh, if you are not already, get involved with the Discord chat. The link is at the bottom below, but if you just go to Discord and type in Bristol Gamers, if you go to Facebook, you can do the same thing, uh, or message us on our individual chats, or just drop a message in the YouTube chat today. We'll be able to link you up and just get involved. So you have the chance to not just watch games and spectate the stream, but also to uh, get involved in the games themselves. So, you know, feel free to get involved, y'all. Y'all need to get that's involved. That's great. Like, Dean's having, like, a big gay party around his house. That, that's really nice. <laughs> He's got the whole gang there. Oh, my I mean... God, really? <laughs> Wait, so are you actually... A Russell's coming to my... Oh, okay, oh, okay. I love that. It's like, it's not even a case of... Um... It's not even a case of like doing it digitally online. It's very much like, oh no, they're all going to be in the same room as each other. So, can you can you like try not to kill each other, guys? Can like you you know, pull back from the the homicide in relation to 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 positions in the um in the race. I like that. that Social distance, of course. Russell, get in your corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you stand outside. I'm gonna get the exp- I'm gonna get the expander. If you got your telescope, you can see the screen from the garden. Yeah, yeah. You, have, you have to play the game <laughs> from the garden. <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically. Oh, amazing. So, uh, what have we got going on now? So, obviously, Emma's doing her event uh, already now. That's going on in the background. And um, OJL's so, saying, Dave, update the graphic. Uh, no, I think, I think that's something else, but... Um, oh. Yeah, so so D and D is running now, but it's a closed event. Uh, but if you do want to get involved in D and D in the future, then just talk to Emma. Uh, and then what we've got coming up very shortly in ten minutes is uh, online board games. Again, if you want to play, then just sign up for uh, boardgamearena.com. You need an account on there, and we'll be using Zoom uh, to talk to each other. Uh, you'll see this all on here because I'll be streaming it all. But yeah, if you want to join in, then make sure you've got an account on uh, Board Game Arena. It's all free, so I should probably mention that. And then uh, in the chat somewhere, Guy has mentioned all the games that we're going to be playing. Uh, Guy and Ake are going to be running the actual event. But yeah, until then. And then after that, I'll jump out just before the end so I can go set up full guys. If anyone wants to be a part of Full Guys, if anyone wants to join in, then um, I'll have my PSN name on screen, and then I'll add other PSN names, just because you can only have a PSN group of four uh, in that uh, lobby. So, uh, and it's not cross-platform, unfortunately. So it's PS4 on my side of things, but if there are some PC gamers, if there's enough of you who want to make a team, then I'll happily put any information up on the screen as well for that. So that's that for now. I may well join you for that. So we'll see what numbers are like, because obviously if we've got enough numbers, um, I'll let other people join in because I'll be talking throughout the day anyway. Um, but yeah, I will, uh, I'll be on standby for that one um, just because it will be funny to play Fall Guys um, and try not to cry as I, um, you know, inevitably get jumped on every five seconds by someone. That'll be, that'll be great. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy that. I'm going to enjoy like, oh. trying not to be oh. jumped on. Did you see that? The, just no. the luck of the draw there, that this person, just like the floor disappeared for him. No! Oh, I did! Yeah, that just came up. Oh, that's <laughs> so tragic. That is so, so tragic. Um, yeah, so that is generally us, I think, for today. If you have any questions before we start the board game stream, 
uh, obviously just let us know. Bear in mind, as I've said before, if anybody's watching, I imagine most people watching right now are from the uh, gamers themselves already. Uh, so you're already on the Discord, but if you're not, please join the Discord page. That's where people are going to be kind of chatting today, where updates are going to be. Um, try to um, also potentially be in the Facebook group if that's easier for you. But what I would recommend is just keep this YouTube stream on in the background. Uh, it's going to mean that no matter what, during the day, you'll be able to pop in and out of events that interest you, join in on games, uh, and it's going to be just a whole lot of silliness, and mostly me and Dave cackling. Probably it's going to be a lot. Of, it's going to be a lot of me and you cackling, Dave. Let's be honest. It is. It's going to be me and you cackling. When I say you mean cackling, I mean you cackling at me, sucking at Fall Guys. Like oh. that's what I'm talking about specifically. How many times have you played be... it? I no more than like. I I don't think I've played more than fifteen games. Like I don't know. I've played it quite a bit. With different people. But I still have not won. No, it's not. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've I've only gotten through to the final round once. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've, I think uh, I played it the other night with Alex, and I got I got to number five, which you know, that was his first time playing, so he was kind of shocked by it. I was like, no, I've done better. I've, I've got like number three, or even down to the last person, but it's just, you know, <laughs> haven't won. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I hear you. I hear you. Um, uh, by the way, okay, so, uh, Guy has been, been saying that, that uh, if you are on here and you want to play for board games, uh, you need to let him know your uh, user ID. Mine there is uh, dd uh, underscore Dave. Um, Guy, what's yours? I must have you on here somewhere. Uh, friends? That, that must be you. There you are. Uh, GKM, I'm sure that's him. So, <clears throat> if you're on board games, please add him as a friend. You probably also should add Headache. Very clever. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who else might be playing at the moment, so we'll see. But yeah, this on a side note, guy, I love your picture. The Cookie Monster is the OG. It fits in there perfectly. <laughs> Oh, so you, know, you know what? Any any Cookie Monster adverts because there's quite a few. Uh, they're hilarious. They're so funny. I love him. I really do love him. I started, love how like um, me, he was like a bit of a scene icon. Like when I was a teenager, like there were lots of t-shirts with the one like "Om Nom Nom," you know, from Primark. <laughs> but I didn't care because I was like, he's so cute. I have a Cookie uh, Monster onesie. There was um on on Disney Plus. There's uh. There's a new Muppets Now show they've just brought out for Disney Plus. It's pretty good, but it is for kids. But oh my god, I, I never watched it before, and I watched the, the Muppets, which is like the Office, and it is the Office with Muppets. It's aimed at adults. Some of the jokes in it are just like, oh my god! Like in the first episode, there was a, oh, wow. a gay joke about bears on a dating app. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So if you like um, Muppets, go watch that. It's amazing. Okay, no, that sounds good actually. Um, so I think we're we're near about ready to to kind of cross over soon, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Um, so just to reiterate what I've just said before, um, just keep this YouTube thing on. The next thing up is going to be, as we mentioned, board games, and then we've got a whole host of stuff throughout the day. So I recommend just keeping this YouTube page uh, open if you can, and just kind of pop it in when when you can to different events that interest you. We are on all day, so if you want to watch us all day, please feel free. That would be great. And make sure to chat on the page because we're desperate for attention. No, um, you know, make sure to like just keep engaging with us because then we know like what you guys want and what we can do, etc. Want to get involved in the games, just let us know in the chat or drop a message in the Discord and we can get you guys sorted. Um, but I think we're pretty much good to go in terms of the, the, the next event, right? Are we... Are we nearing ready to go? Yep, I'm just making sure everything's set up. Uh, Beautiful. Yep, Guy, I will be there momentarily. Which means I think I need to drop you out. Are you gonna are you gonna come over and join us? I'm talking to you. <laughs> I don't I didn't know who you were speaking to. In terms of the, the board games. Uh yeah. 
I could do. I'm going to go and eat some food and try to make my face look less horrendous. So, um... <laughs> so you how that camera wrong? You're just like, no! Nah. Oh, when you said... I know, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, when makeup. you... I'm very vain. Um, no, um... <laughs> When are you, <laughs> when are you, um, oh, so when you, when you say join the games, you mean actually join the board games, like, itself? Uh, join the board games, but also we've got a Zoom chat, so if you want to join us on there, you're welcome. Oh, I might well do towards the end, actually, because I will we'll be able to set up for, uh, the Fall Guys event then, so I'll probably join in so that people can join in and make teams with, with me, maybe if they want to, if there's enough people. Mm -hmm. So I might just join in at the very end. Uh, but no, I'm going to get some stuff sorted beforehand. So uh, let me know what's going on. I will stay in the chat, though, so uh, people can chat, etc. Uh, but yes. So people look at the chat now, if you, can't, if you haven't already seen it. If you want to join um, the Zoom call so that you guys can play board games, you have to go to the Zoom chat. So if you look at the messages there, it says join gay, um, join gay. I'm so sorry, guy. I've just called you gay. Join guy for board games on Zoom. Press in that number for the meeting and it will come up. Um, as we mentioned, though, if you do want to join in the board games, there might be a slot or two available. You have to join in like pretty much now because of the starting soon. Um, and you have to sign up to what's the website called, Dave? Uh, board game, boardgamearena.com. It's on the screen right now. Boardgamearena.com. Um, add those accounts right there um, and join in. Uh, if you just want to watch, obviously just stay on the stream. Uh, Dave, Guy and a bunch of other people will be on the stream uh, playing the game and chatting away and just feel free to keep chatting in the the YouTube channel chat uh, below and I will be properly seeing you guys uh, for a little bit of Fall Guys at 1 o'clock and then properly for my live stream at 2 where I'll be talking with uh, two of my friends who are game developers and we're going to be talking about how to make a game so there we go that's that's all on my end that's me done i'm out peace no I'm kidding uh yeah i'm out so um are you good to to go ahead if yep. i uh yep clear off downstairs and <laughs> throw food in the oven clear off so i can join the zoom thing <laughs> okay goodbye <laughs> bye guys i will see you all later take care bye Wait, I'm not left. No, I'm... <laughs>
How is everyone today? Okay, so I can I think we've got five. Um and we've got um Aik, David, uh Javier, Chris and me. Ooh, somebody started up something up. <laughs> okay, so let's make a start. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, great. Um so welcome to Pride Board Gaming. Um what we thought we'd do, because I think we've got a few uh, newbies to board game arena websites we um we just try a really really simple game to start us off with and then we'll go on to uh ones that are a little more involved um so the first game we're going to do is yahtzee which is really really simple it's just literally rolling dice to get um dice uh certain dice combinations um has any of have you all played yahtzee before or have any of you not played it before no okay fine so i'll explain so I'll explain the rules um, so what I'm going to first do is I'm going to invite you to a game. Okay, so I've just invited you to a game and you'll need to click accept on your screen. <laughs> Annoying noise. Okay, cool. Okay, so we'll just pause it here and I'll just explain what we have to do. So um, at the top of the screen, you'll see there's uh, five dice. And basically you get three chances to roll um, various combinations. And what you're trying to do, the object is to score as many points as you possibly can. And there's a table just underneath the dice. And basically what we're trying to do is roll all of those combinations. So the first section is just literally how many ones you can score, how many twos, threes, fours, and, and all the way down the first bit. And then the second section, there's not a different kind of, most of them are sort of poker combinations. So there's three of a kind, four of a kind. A full house is where you get um, three of the same, so it could be three sixes and two of something else. So let's say two threes or, or any combination of those. So it's three of something and then two of something else. A small straight is when you get four um, dice in a row. So it could be one, two, three, or four, or two, three, four, five. And a large straight is where you get all five in the correct number order. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, five, six, for example. Yahtzee is the one that you really want to get because that scores the most points and that's where you get five sixes. It's rare, but it's possible for you to do it. And then the bottom one is chance. And that is literally if you you know roll a really bad one and you don't really get anything that you need, then it's the total number of dots. So you just add them up and that's how many points you score. So as I said, you get three chances to roll um, and you don't have to roll all three, you can roll um, just one if you want to. So, okay, so Aki's already started now, so you can see he's got full house there. So what, what he, want, he could do there is accept that and then click down on, on the green section to accept the full house. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I should, have, I should have waited and explained. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should have. <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> so, so, so what? Don't worry. What's so you've, got full, now? you've got full house there. So if you yep. click on where it says full house and then click on the green bit where it says plus 25, click on that. Uh, 
I think it's Chris's. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to accept that full house, uh, in in the in the in the table um, where it says full house under yeah. your name. That's it. You got it. That's the one. So now it's um, Javier's turn. So you've got um, uh, you've got a three, four, five, six straight away. Yeah. There, you've got a small straight if you want, or you can yeah, um, draw a four, or you can <laughs> roll it. But you've, you've already got a quite a good score there. So if you want to take that, you just go down to small straight and then click where it says in the green box, small straight. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Now on this one, yeah. you got two, two. So you might just want to re-roll the one, for example, mm. or you might want to do whatever you yeah. want, but to get a full house. Is that how you do it? Do you click that and then press roll? So you click on the dice you want to roll. Yeah. And then click on re-roll. There you go. <laughs> Everyone full house first there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I totally lost yeah. last time. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Ah, nice. nice. <laughs> that's really hard and you got it straight away, so you're very fortunate. That's a large straight. There you go. Hmm. Oh, I might be wrong. A six. There's one final thing which I'll say in terms of a tip in that um, if you get more than 63 points in the top bit of the table. So ones, two, threes, fours, five, six, you get a bonus of 35 points, which is really quite handy. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh. Uh. Did I just do something? <laughs> you can roll. What do you mean? Oh, no, you, oh you've got a full. You've got, um, you got a large straight there. Which straight is that one? Yeah, keep, that's a large keep, straight. Click so you the want large to... straight. Yep. Oh, okay. So oh. Just click on, that's 40 points. That's good. That's it. Hold on. That's a hard one to get, so you've done well. That's a shit roll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm trying to choose. I might get rid of. Get rid of those. Oh, one away from my last straight. Yeah. Uh, let's try. Oh, God. Uh, I think I'll take that. Ah, rubbish. I mean, this is entirely luck based, really, isn't it? You say that, but there are championships of Yahtzee, and they would be furious if they heard you say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the skill of which dice you choose to roll. It's a bit it's like, obviously okay. gets harder and harder. Two, three, four, five. Small straight. I'll yeah. take that. Nice. Oh. Mm. Full house. A full house. Okay. You. 
you can only catch in like one category it's one once right that's right yeah one per turn mm. no i mean even another turn you can only get one or you can do multiple so, so like if i get full house again can i take 25 points again ah, no 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 once once it's gone it's gone once you've okay got it, you've got it. <clears throat> so Except I think Yahtzee is the only one where you can, if you get multiple Yahtzees, you can. But that's, unlike, that's unlikely. <laughs> so, Guy, is there, so you say there's a Yahtzee championship. Do you watch it? Yeah. Say again? Are you, do you watch the Yahtzee championship? <laughs> no, I never play this normally. <laughs> this is uh, purely really to warm us up, <laughs> to make sure everything's working. <laughs> <laughs> If you get Yahtzee, do you have to shout it out? Yes, like I think it's go. mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> Wave your arms in the air <laughs> like a family guy. And then someone shouts, gay. Liberation. Oh. Over time, nice. Nice. Mm. <laughs> it's not a thought game. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, four. Oh, these two. Ah, oh, rubbish. Oh, I already got that one. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the fours, you see. If you can, you can roll the other two and try and get as many fours at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, but yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. What else? You already got it. <laughs> I already got that one. Do I? Yeah. Three of a kind. Is this with? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You can you could take three of a kind or you could take the fours, it's up to you. Uh see. Yeah, three and a kind, let's go for that one. Okay. So I need I played it wrong. <laughs> it earlier played wrong. Yeah, there is a strategy in the art scene. <laughs> I'm guessing they're ordered in uh, likelihood, maybe. So one's the most likely, maybe Yahtzee's the most unlikely. Um... So what would be a large straight? That's where all five are in, in the same, so one, two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, five, six. So it's like a straight with five dice. A small straight is a straight with four dice. Got it. Oh. Um. Oh, 
Jim's ball straight. Hmm. Uh, Not so many straights. <laughs> <laughs> All these straights on a pride day. <laughs> I mean, I guess most would consider a small straight under 5-6. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> yeah, you get some more straight. Oh wow, <laughs> that's a lot. Nobody's got close to the arts to get. <laughs> That'd be rubbish, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do I keep? <laughs> <laughs> you can re them all if you want. <laughs> yeah, very tempted. <laughs> Oh well, that's better. Oh, okay. I think I get it now. So obviously you've got full house, a straight, and you are set points, and then the, because of the rest, they're dependent on the value of the dice. You want to roll them in such a way that you get maximum score. Exactly. Yeah. Groups of two, three, four. So like three of the yeah. kind of four of the you... kind, you don't want to be accepting like three of the kind of ones, for example, because you only get one, three points plus yeah. scores the other one. So you That's want to what be I'd be wrong for four of a kind. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Shame. 17. Yeah, four, four kind. So obviously where's got some of the dice. So if you've got like three ones and then two sixes, then you'd get actually more from the, the sixes than you would the three of the kind ones. Mm. Uh, two, three, four. Yes. You probably figured this out already, but the the scores are in the top right where you've got the, the underneath the names. You can see who's winning. So at the moment, Javi is winning. Really, it's a change. It's usually you. <laughs> <laughs> But it could all change. <laughs> One of those things where I realised too late just how to play. Yeah. But then, you know, if you, if you play again, that, most of the time when you play things for the first time. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> mm. Okay. Mm. 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 Mm.
Lee. <laughs> He's gone into the lead. Almost need like battle music or something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've just thought, Dave, because you're showing your screen on YouTube. Yeah. For the next game, that might not be very beneficial because that's all right. We'll I, I can move it out of the way. <laughs> oh yeah. Because <laughs> we'll be able to see what you're doing. <laughs> It doesn't really matter for this one. The end game now gets trickier. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing worse now that I know how to play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, overthinking it. <laughs> it is, yeah. Before I was just like, let's just click all the colors. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of dots. Javier's killing it. <laughs>
Oh. Pull the time. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. Nice. Nice six roll. Oh. At the moment, if someone gets yard safe, I'm probably he's gonna win. <laughs> yeah. So, what if. Everyone only ah. has Yahtzee to roll. Uh, basically, you get you score zero points if you don't if you right. don't get it. Sure. Or if you don't get any of the categories. Like see, seeing you'll be getting where you can't get anything, so you just get zero. Yeah. No. <laughs> like that, like that one. <laughs> you clicked the wrong button. <laughs> oh no 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 I, no! I did it. No, it was the right one. I didn't oh. score anything on this oh, one. I gamble and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you demonstrated that for us. Yeah. About it. Happy to help. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> See. Oh, go on, two of them. Oh, what oh my God. God. <laughs> ah, So close. Oh, it's too much of gamble. <laughs> <laughs> Three, four, five, six. Damn, guy, you need to to get five, six to get that bonus. Yeah. Exactly. So for like, you mean for the last straight? Uh, for the bonus. The plus it, it, 35 it, 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 points, you yeah. need to get the one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, so on. And add up to 63 points. Ah. So you can see I'm, I'm missing 18, but I have five to put in. Right, and I'm missing 27. Yep. Yeah. Dang. Oh. If you re roll one of those threes, you get a large straight. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. <laughs> oh. Gamble. <laughs> so, so I'm I'm hoping for what was it two? Two, yeah. Oh, you got oh, it. Yes. <laughs> oh, <no way>. <laughs> <laughs> what is your answer? One and six. Oh. <laughs> Amazing. Are you going to say it's all skill now? Yeah. <laughs> it before it was luck, but now you know my skills kicking in. <laughs> Okay, a tough one. Let's see. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're definitely winning now. <laughs> right. um, oh. Four and the got C. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, good luck on that. Oh yeah, you did really well. You, you bonus thirty-five. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hard to beat. <laughs> Damn it. Look at my roll compared to yours. Oh. Try and get a lot of ones somehow. Yeah. Or I could try to go for all sixes. Hmm. Yeah, let's try to go all for right. all sixes. We only have ones or Yahtzee, so I would just go for one. Nope, too late. <laughs> <laughs> Should, uh... Score one point. <laughs> you think? Maybe I could, yeah, I suppose the Yahtzee's yeah. my only hope now, isn't it? Yep. <sighs> the next three rolls. <laughs> yeah, the oh. ones are pretty ditch anyway. Your maximum score is six or five, so it's... I'm 26 away from 35, so no point. Yeah. Oh, what a kind, nice. Yes, nice. Although, even though I've scored I can't, I can't see now, I don't think I'd catch up to... <laughs> so, so here is the, is the idea to try and get as high numbers as possible for the... Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So here we go. Yeah. Oh, let me see. Ooh. <clears throat> oh, I made it. <laughs> well done. I made the bonus. Oh, well done. <laughs> Here. It's, a, it's, a, it's a fight between first and second here. <laughs> <laughs> neck and neck. Um, ah. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Hell. Ah. <laughs> so what is the goal on this? What have I got to do? The five sixes. Yeah. <laughs> Five sixes. Yeah. So re-roll anything that's not a six. <laughs> can, can, I thought it can be any any. Oh, there we go. Isn't it? Two to go. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just like um five of any numbers. No, no, it's five. It's five. Six. Okay. Oh. None of us got it. Oh. Well done! Yay! Oh. <laughs> Smashed it. Just squeeze, squeeze through the last round. <laughs> you know, <Okay>. stuck. <laughs> okay, so that was warm up. So we're going to move to our second game now. You might get a few trophies. Mm. Uh, By the way, if there's anyone on the stream who would like to join in, then uh, you just need to get an account on boardgamearena.com. Uh, and Guy can let you into the group. Let's see if anyone 
extra wants to join in. Everyone's on YouTube wants to join in. You've got to be very extra. Yeah. Shall I shall I pause for a minute or so? Or? Um. Give, give it just a, a few seconds yeah. just to see. If well, if anyone wants to stretch their legs or get a drink or whatever, then we'll give it two minutes maybe. Okay. Yeah, give me a moment. Uh, I need to set up something anyway. So. Mm. I'll get a drink. Yep. Not as impressive you are to playing it, eh? <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Lots of gambling. I miss play though. <laughs> Is that your first time playing that? So, are you talking to me? Uh, or both three? Is it 8k? Uh, we did play it last time, but I can barely remember it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh wow, there's Kingdom Builder in here now. Have you seen it, guys? Or not? They are gone. <laughs> yeah, what what do you reckon would be a good name a uh, good game to play next? Um I will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guy, there's um Kingdom Builder in there. It's quite good. You should try it. Kingdom At some Lord. point, yeah. I haven't played that, is that? Okay. Have you... Can't Stop also a good game. <laughs> Similar to... Can't Stop? Can't Stop. Similar to Yahtzee. Okay. <laughs> so, is everyone back? Dave, you back? Yep. Cool, everyone ready? Right. Um, so I've just sent you an invite to a game called For Sale. Uh, do you have to go back to the main site? Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, no. I need... Uh. Can't waste on the Everyone got the invite, there's only three in there so far. I didn't get it. You didn't get it, okay, I'll resend it. I'll quit I'll quit that one and resend. Okay, I've just sent it again. Oh uh, yeah. Is that knocking? Oh is that when someone the game. Yeah. <laughs> I was banging on your door. <laughs> <laughs> it's really creepy because it sounds realistic. I think Javier is the only one. Is doing something funny. It says that I'm already in the game. Ah, okay. Um... I'm just going to ah. decline the invite. Uh... Oh, you just declined it. Okay, I'll try and. Uh, yep, yeah, we got it. Yep, yeah, that's it. So now you need to click, click, click accept. Okay, so if you don't do anything before I tell you, so I'll just explain the rules <clears throat> when we're in the game. Oh, no, it crashed out. We've got. Mm. Yeah, we just lost Javier. Are you, are you back in there now? Yeah, I don't understand because it says that I'm in the game, but <laughs> not in the game. Close so. <laughs> um, <laughs> and reopen the website. I'm, I'm just going to try and invite you. 
Hey, I've just invited you again, so... Yeah, I just saw it. You got it? Yeah. Okay, got it. Am I, am I in now? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yes, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. That's it, we're, we're there. Okay. We're cooking. <laughs> they just, they left us, except... There we go, right, we're in. Okay, that's the technical stuff. Okay, so... Uh, no video at the moment. So, basically, this is a game of two parts, really. There's a, a buying section and then there's a selling section. This is the buying section. So everyone has got the same amount of money. We've all got $14,000 each and they're all um, on, the, on the bottom of your screen. And each of the rounds, and there's five rounds, um, so there's six rounds in total. This is the first round and there's, there's another five rounds to go. Um, we'll, have, we'll be bidding on properties to buy, basically. And you want to get um, the highest possible card you can get. And the cards range from one, which is the worst, up to 30, which is the best. Um, and you can basically bid as much money as you want to in order to get the best cards. And each round of the six rounds, there'll be five cards that potentially you can get. So in this round, each one of us are going to get one of these cards. The person that bids the lowest amount at the end of the round will get the six. The person that bids the highest at the end of the round will get the 24 and then each, you know, sub subsequently for the other cards. Um, the only final bit is that you can um, you can bid. So let's say I, I go first and I bid one, then each person in turn, you know, it goes in, in the order of the list on the right hand side, um, then can bid two, and then you can skip and you can bid six if you want to bid, or eight or ten, or however many you want to bid. Um, at the end of that first round, you will then get the opportunity of bidding again if you want to outbid somebody. Um, but obviously you've got to bear in mind that there's six rounds, so you don't want to spend all your money straight away. So the skill of it really is to get the best card you can for the for the fewest amounts of money you possibly can. And in the final round, you probably won't have very much money left at all. Um, I'll explain the second bit when we get to the second bit so that you retain that information. Um, in order to kind of bid, what you have to do is just hover over. So if you want to bid, um, let's say, 3,000, you just click on the... You, you click on three along, basically. Um, oh, I get it. And you'll pick it up. So right, it's my turn to go first. Um, and it's saying to me, you must select an auction, either bid or pass. So um, I'm going to bid um, two, 2,000. So I'm going to click on the on, on two of the coins and I'm bidding. Then pass it to fake. So how do we know which property are we bidding for? So you're not bidding. So basically the, the winner of the round will get the 24 and mm -hmm. the person that comes last will get the six. I so see. If you, pass, if you pass now, you would automatically get the six. Okay. You come um, last. So and you could just, for, you could just, so what's if, the number if, range like? The property range. Is range. One, one to 30. Okay. So if, if the last card was like a really, really high one, you might think, oh, I'm going to save my money. I'll just take the last card. But six is not a very good card. So you might want to bid. It's oh, not sorry, possible. the uh, final bit of information I didn't give you. Sorry. Um, the only At the end of each round, the winner, all of the money they've bid will go to the bank. So they'll lose it all. Everyone that comes second, third, fourth or fifth, only half of their money goes and then half of the money is re retained. So only the person that bids the highest amount pays the full whack. Everything else, only and if it's five, then three goes to the bank and you get two back. So is it possible to get any of the properties in the middle, 10, 15, or 19? Yeah, so the person that comes second will get 19. The person that comes right. third will, come, will get 15. Fourth will get 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So some in the strategy, you might think, well, actually, sometimes it's best to come second if the, the second card is highest because you only pay half the money for it and you get a second good card the person that wins the round is going to pay the full whack for 24 and obviously there's a there's, there's 25 26 27 28 29 30 they're all better cards what if you draw um you can't draw so you can't bid the same amount as somebody else right so you've either got to bid more or you pass yes okay Okay. Um, the other thing is you don't have to go two, three, four. You can go six, seven. You know, you can bid, on, and even on the first bid, you could bid, bid six if you want. You know. 
So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So you've got to bid basically five or pass or, or more than five. You get five, six, as many as you want. Oh, all right. So. All right. So you pass. So you got the sixth one. Okay. Uh, then Chris's turn. You can either bid five or more or take the ten. If you pass, you'll get the ten card. And it won't cost you anything. Wow. Uh, and if I. So if I were to bid one, I'd still get a 10 card. You don't have to bid one at all. You can't bid one. You can only bid... The minimum you can bid is five. Oh, I see. It always has to be higher. It always has to be higher, yeah. But if you right. pass and don't bid anything, you'll automatically get the 10. Because you're... That's it. <laughs> so now now once everyone's had one turn, it comes back to me again. So I get the choice of whether I want to outbid the leader, which is currently Dave, so I can bid an extra three if I want to, to do that, to get um, the 24 or... I can say, no, I'm happy with the, the 15, and then I'll only pay 1,000 for it, so I'm going to pass. 1,000 comes back to me, and I get the 15 card. Hmm. So Ake now has that decision. He has to decide the same thing. You could outbid Dave, or you could... Right, you've done the same. That's it. So, we've got more rounds now. Hmm. And the winner starts. Kind of reminds me of Power Grid, if you guys have played that. No, is it similar? You do bid on uh, not so much properties, but power stations, and then you use the power stations to power a city, which is really cool. But then you've also got to fuel those power stations, and you can have oil, gas, and you've got to buy the fuel as well. So mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of similar, but more involved. Yeah. Sounds a little bit like The Sims. <laughs> mm. The Sims uh, City Ride, whatever it's called. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Big roller, here we go. <laughs> but the casino. That real money. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to cost you. <laughs> You're going to be skimping the other rounds now. Oh, here's the big one. Oh! Here's the big one. <laughs> Here they are. <laughs> no, he's got no money now. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, like that. Space station, please. <laughs> Everyone wants the 30.
there is a variant to this game where you can um, you can turn on where you can see how much money people have got left. Uh, we turned that one off. Some secrets over here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we can see all. <laughs> Does that mean Aki can't bid five? He has to bid seven. Yeah. <laughs> he's got eight. Yeah. So he's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> so Dave's got to dig deep if he wants this. <laughs> 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 it's, it's nine or the five, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> A sewer drain. I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man. Owen, yes. <laughs> so I get 26. Yeah. And then pay two for it. So that's pretty good for you. So how can you see which cars you have? But, um, all the your cars you bought are at the bottom. So it says your property cars. Oh. You can see what which ones you bought. Oh, I can scroll down, okay. Yeah, <laughs> can scroll down. Ah. Oops. Press the wrong <laughs> In the second part of the game, you'll be using those cards, so I'll explain that in a second. Um, who's left? Uh, it's Chris now. I was intending to buy that. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Okay, last round. It's me. So in the last round, there's no really all... You might as well go all in, right? Ah, so um, any money you've got left over adds to your final score. So, um, right. so potentially you, you know, you will benefit to keep some if you don't have to use it. So every thousand you have left, you'll get an extra point. Oh no! <laughs> you don't really want the one. Nice. <laughs> High roller. Okay, I'll automatic. just explain this bit now. So, um, so we've done the buying bit. Now this is the selling bit. So we're selling our properties now. Um, so um, basically, the object of this bit is to buy the highest car you possibly can. And the cards are always arranged with the highest card on the left and the lowest card on the right. In the same way as the first part of the game, whoever puts the highest card um, forward, and obviously we can't see which card you're going to put forward, um, you will get the, the, the <laughs> highest card. And then it goes sub subsequently down. So whoever puts the lowest card in is going to get the 2 in this round. Whoever puts the highest card in is going to get the 15. Now the range for this one is 0 to 15. So 15 is the best you can get, and 0 is the worst. Um, so one quick tactic on this is if you look at the um, the last the lowest card, if you've got really crap cards, then potentially you could get rid of your low cards, and you would know that actually the minimum I'm going to lose is going to be, you know, if, if like sevens, eights, nines comes up as, as the lowest card, then that's still quite a good card to get you to on a really low card. Fifteen is obviously the highest one. So it's basically strategy, really. You don't know what everyone else is going to play, um, and it's. That's the, that's the round. So, do yeah. you lose your card? Say again? Do you lose the card you're you selling? Card. You can only play the card once, yeah. Uh, 
So obviously if you've got a 30, then you're definitely going to win that round. If you've got a 1, you're definitely going to lose that, that round. Um, so just click on the card you want to throw in. And then click on confirm at the top. And it's six rounds again, it's the same as the first round. Oh, is it six rounds? Okay. Yeah, six cards, <clears throat> six rounds. God, this is almost blind chance now, isn't it? Um... Strategy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, eight's got in with a 30. Nice. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so this one, no cards. is mounting. How, what's the highest uh, card number? You 30. Can oh, sorry, 15. 15 on this one is the highest. Have we already had it? Did they only have one? No, there's, there's several. There's several. Oh, oh no, I thought it's only that's only one. 15. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> A zero card? <laughs> yeah, 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 zero. 15 to zero. <laughs> you don't want that one. <laughs> Could I pass on that one? <laughs> Someone's gonna get it. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> I left. <laughs> oh, there's another 15. Here we go, C's one. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Didn't get so lucky this time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's full house. Oh no, sorry, full sale. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that's the end of that game. Um, we've now got 25 minutes left, so we were going to play. Uh, Colt Express, which lasts longer than 25 minutes. So, uh, does anyone have to leave at one o'clock? I know Dave has to. Really, it's just me <laughs> leaving just before then. So, I mean, if you guys want to continue playing, that's fine. You don't really have to cap it at one o'clock if you don't have to. Yeah. Javier, you, you, you've got to leave at one as well, is that right? Yeah, me yeah. too for the all guys. Ah, so, what, okay. we, what we could well, like do say, is just the, it, it will be one o'clock ish, but it's, there's going to be some teething to like set up. So it'll probably run over by like maybe ten minutes or so as I set up. So yeah, Colt Express is a is, is really hard to judge. So I wouldn't want to wouldn't want you to start that and then not. I think we could do another one because now everyone knows how to play this one. We could play this one again and we'd, then we'd finish it at one. Should, yeah, should we do that, that sounds good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just yeah. Quick toilet break for me. Okay, uh, yeah, quick break. One minute. <laughs> yeah. 
What games do you normally play, Chris? Is you a board game? So, funny enough, um, I went and set up a board game club at my work, um, but I never used to actually play board games when I was at university, for example, and I didn't even really go to the board game club, and then since starting Ready. work, it's something I've uh, sort of found a passion for, I guess, and I end up maybe collecting more board games than I play, as, really? as usually most people go, well, and during lockdown it's not been great, but you know, when you have a board game club, everyone sort of brings their own games and you only ever be able to play like two or three of them. So I've got a few downstairs. I've got um, like Gloomhaven. Actually, I just kickstarted um, the Frosthaven. So I've got like the uh, mm -hmm. Solo Scenario campaign. One of the other ones I recently got. I've kickstarted quite a few um, <laughs> during lockdown. Because, you know, <laughs> that, that website is so dangerous. <laughs> it is, yeah. It spends so much money on it. I know. Oh, like uh nemesis was another one recently it's kind of like an alien themed um, oh yes i think, I think I have... one. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's it's been good fun and i've been trying to get some virtual board game board games in so like on table top simulator and things like that and funny enough i only found out about board game arena for a friend only about two weeks ago before oh, really? you guys posted it so like, it's obviously, yeah. Yeah, like the ones we're playing, obviously, they're, they're, they're the dead simple ones, and they're, I just thought it'd be good for people that haven't you know, played these kind of things before. But there's you know, loads and loads of much more involved games, which some of my play. Um, so, yeah, if you fancy a game, you've obviously got my username there, so invite me. But there's, uh, there's yeah, explore it, there's loads and loads of games. Ooh, do you only play on here, or do you have things like Tabletop Sim or Tabletopia? No, virtually I only play on here. I I, I tend I, I much prefer playing like in real life. Really. I, I, I get the chance oh, encounters, um, especially on a Monday night. They've got like the social gaming. Well, they used to have social gaming, and yeah. like, under like six hundred games there. It's always very loud, isn't it? I think I feel like they should put some insulate acoustic insulation on the ceiling or something, just so people can hear each other. But uh... yeah, that's true. Well, especially I think it's better by the door. Uh, it seems to be there but yeah if you're in the back then it can get really really loud but no that's that's obviously my preference is it is it open now i can't remember yeah they just uh, just reopened but only to sort of groups they haven't reopened the social game on monday but yeah you can book tables again now. so charles encounters you know you just think of that place and it's just it's so small just like so cramped in it's like yeah i don't see how you can really social distance in there <laughs> yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know how they, they. I think they've probably taken some tables out, I guess. Or <laughs> As the cards sort of... are all blowing away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good because obviously it's near locked in the room as well. So as a sort of social event for the board games club, we used to go to locked in the room and then go to um, chance encounters. I think we only did that two or three times though, but uh, it was good. Uh, are you inviting again or yeah uh, I, I, th I thought everyone was in but they weren't so, oh, it's just, uh, it's just, yeah, headache. You've got 100% reputation. Yes. What does that mean? <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, you, you lose, um, you lose reputation points if you leave a game, uh, whilst it's playing, whilst, you know, um, and also if you, uh, are, uh, rude in the chat, then you can be reported <laughs> and you can lose reputation points. Aha! Let's lower this score a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've only played like before that before this session. I've only played one game, so I don't know how I've got seventy-seven percent. Oh right, yeah. Hey. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
I'm gonna hide it this time. <laughs> if you do say a naughty word, then it tells you off. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to do it because I do. I use this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So just to be clear, we don't really actually score any points during these buying processes. It's only when you start to sell them that we actually earn. Exactly. Money. Yeah. You're basically just buying the best card you can in order to give you the best yeah. advantage in the second round. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't necessarily if... guarantee. No, you've got to play the cards. No. Whether you set up for a failure or a success or this thing. <laughs> sometimes you're bidding deliberately not to win the round but for other people to spend money um, and to come second or third that's yeah but now if, if we force you to win now you get <laughs> yeah, yeah if, if like i bid five then you could force me to win but then i'd be quite happy with paying five for 25. oh <laughs> i always seem to be the first to pass get the rubbish one <laughs> If you win, then you that you get the advantage of going first as well. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> Go on, put ten in. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'll do six. <laughs> One and thirty. Again. <laughs> the big guns are out. <laughs> Damn it. Oh no way! Oh my god! I s if you guys make me pass on the one, I can't. I <laughs> that was it. I didn't oh my that. god! <laughs> it's gonna cost you, Chris. I mean, <laughs> get your turn out. <laughs> this is such a horrible position. <laughs> It's... I mean, how many is that? Ten? Yes. Yeah, no, I got nothing there. You know what? I can still get money with one. 
Some this cost me an awful lot. Somebody oh. can outbid me though. <laughs> they, oh, somebody outbid me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Pay... I don't want to pay nine. <laughs> <laughs> Number one property is a cardboard box. <laughs> I just realised. I mean, I'd rather live in a cardboard box than a sewer. <laughs> Number two is a shed. Yeah, exactly. I'd rather live in a shed. Well, I suppose that's why it's two, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think the sewer should be two. Is everyone passing? Would you want to live on a space station for 30? I had artificial gravity. <laughs> yes, give him a TP. <laughs> So one of those is an RV, the other one just looks like an ambulance. What was yeah. That? Oh yeah, yeah. You live on the road. <laughs> the cogs are turning. Yeah. There's uh, still 27 out there, isn't there? Yeah, that's the thing. So, uh, I'm gonna play it safe. It's <laughs> good. Cheat round for Chris. Yeah. Oh, no. X coming there. <laughs> How many rounds have we got now? Uh, so there's one more after this. On the card, it's got like times five, that's the number of cards that are left, so you can tell. the first time I had I've actually outbid someone you know like I've always passed rather than trying to outbid on okay. the second turn yeah. interesting yeah might be worth it to have time it come with the ones here it's a good 27 28 it's my turn this is last round and this last round last round yeah. everybody mm. wins <laughs>
Goes in strong. Oh. I don't I yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh my word! <laughs> no! <laughs> You've got the money. Too rich for me. Oh well. <laughs> well, I guess something. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Here we go. Sell, sell, sell. Hey, I got two thousand dollars for a cardboard box. <laughs> Must be in Bristol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, I could have got five thousand. Don't mind. <laughs> this box is at least worth five thousand pounds. <laughs> Maybe my cave will do better. Or in my shed. You've got 9,000. <laughs> Wonderful. I agree that. Oh, two zeros. Mm. Couple of nasty zeros in there. <laughs> yeah. It was a low value one anyway. <laughs> Difference between first and second there. Uh. I lost the game. <laughs> <laughs> See, he never loses. <laughs> we got back to Gen C. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, oh well. Oh it was, well. It was good fun anyway. Exactly, <laughs> that was the point. And if you play okay. again, you get. You guys, only won by two thousand each. Yes, yeah, tight game. You lot talk amongst yourselves, I'm just going to go and set up this stream. Well, I was going to bring it to a close, I think. Uh, yeah. I hope, I hope everyone enjoyed that. And, uh, it yeah. was fun. Thank you. Thank you for hosting. No worries. Uh, we'll do it again in the time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Right, so. Back to streaming. So. The way that this is going to work now is in the corner there you see uh, my PSN name. If you want to join in with Four Guys, I'm just going to set up the stream right now. So YouTube will be looking at my uh, my Twitch stream. And so in, the way that we're going to play this together is we're going to have uh, smaller uh, PSN groups of four. So uh, anyone who wants to be a team leader uh, I will put your name on the screen here, but as you can see, my name there, Yushikaris, that's my PSN name. Uh, I'm probably going to fill up by the sounds of it, so uh, basically just put in the chat whether or not you, um, if you can't get in, just put your name in there and I'll add you to uh, this screen here. Uh, so bear with me while I go set this up, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in a moment.
I'm good. <laughs> uh, you're still spectating. Yeah, I need to leave. <laughs> many windows. <laughs> for 30 minutes. Your, what's your least favourite level? Ha, ha, ha. 
Yes, I can see that. <laughs> Can't do anything about it while I'm playing the game. <laughs> You can also you can also use it to grab on two edges. I just made it worse again. Yay! <laughs> Oh, 
They're doing that, they're doing the spawn trick. Do that. See, see watch, watch the blue one there. Look at the blue one, look, straight in. Do it. Yeah, do it again, look, he's not even moving. Except one of those goals is mine. Half of one of them potentially is mine. But. <laughs> right. Oh, damn it. What is that noise? It sounds like someone's washing you down. be nice to get to the final stage at least <laughs> like one of us <laughs> Yes. 
somewhere. <laughs> Might be feedback. <laughs> you come on. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's almost like it makes sense to not have a tail to the last like 10 seconds. Oh! <laughs> 
No! <laughs> Do you see what I mean? He literally took it in the last two seconds. One hot dog left. Now you have to find your way back. so far behind I still have a tail <laughs> it's because I'm doing streaming this through Twitch and then Twitch is then being viewed on YouTube so still it's quite delay are you shocked quitting Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Uh, he got kicked out for some reason. Either that or uh, my multiple streams. Probably because I sent you a new notification. change. Might have to be the last game unless you guys want to continue playing together. They're very quiet. Getting <laughs> some serious feedback from you. and then like lobbies of 60 people. <laughs>
episode, so I'm finally through. Yeah, there you are. Try and invite you, and then hopefully that will do it. <laughs> Come on, let's get one more game in. So, uh, all right, try one more thing. So I'm gonna leave this group. And then, yeah, if you invite us. It's really sad. That was really delayed. Okay, so, so ours is working because we're loading players. So I think you might have to just play this last game. Yeah. Oh, maybe. We might play this later on. eliminated on the line I was thinking I was thinking of grabbing the person in front yeah I like me, me and my lot we, we play it all the time but you know, if you're on PS4 and you're around.
Oh, wow, you're so lucky. <laughs> Stay to the left, see if you to the left on that thing. <laughs> because if you get hit, you might not fly off like that. Yeah, people always stay dumped on me. Have you seen the, the portal costume? No, we're dead. Mm. It's all up to you now. You have to win. Oh, it's this one is hard. <laughs> this one's... So the slime rises. So you have to keep going and it's just all obstacles. This is probably the only one that actually involves skill. yellow walkways that are the worst. And then you get to the top and there's some people who like push you into the, the swingy things, kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone, sorry for any uh, technical difficulties there, not sure whether that was the servers not being able to handle the, um, uh, just like Fall Guys has always not been able to handle a lot of streams and things, or could just be um, <laughs> my multiple streams, but never mind. Uh, Right, where am I? You can't see me. Uh, Hello everyone. Right, so next uh, we've got live stream with JT Leon as 
uh, do some interviews. Uh, I'm just going to make sure I find out where he is. And then how's everything on the stream? All good. Right, so, uh, Jonathan, where are you? Got me to stream your Twitch? Are you online? One moment, everyone. Uh, just making sure the stream is still going. Yeah, all good. Great. Right. How is everyone today? Is this stream going well? Is everyone enjoying everything? That was really good. Uh, because so, to long to story short, light, that, lightning wind up taking the series. Um, online uh host my twitch ah. so as long as it's working on my twitch that means the that's streams sick. work and so that's the most important thing where is this going where is this going out to and being hosted by like so this is being hosted by uh bristol gamers uh so we're an offshoot of like bristol pride um and it's basically just like a pride event because we did one in july and then ah the stream's working <clears throat> there's a little bit of feedback it's gone yeah. now it should have gone now. Is that right? It keeps coming in and out a little bit. I don't hear it. I don't hear it on mine, but maybe it's one ear because I'm only plugging on one ear. Yeah, no, I I can hear feedback as well. If it gets too loud, we'll figure it out from there. But we are now live. Oh, <laughs> oh so there hello. There was your, didn't you jump into it. There was your your little your little kind of soft thing. So we're live on Twitch. I'm just going to double check if I am being hosted on the Game of Pride. I'm not at the moment, which is weird. So give me one sec, guys, and then we'll be ready to go. Yeah, thank you again for being uh, for being patient. No worries. No worries. We will be ready to go. Yeah, how have you guys been anyway? I mean, I'll be asking you in the stream, but how are you guys doing generally? You okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm holding together by painting loads of miniatures, pretty much. Oh, really? Just, yeah, doing loads of that stuff. How's that going? Yeah, I'm loving it, actually. Just working on some little 40k Space Wolf guys. Oh. And, yeah, just been doing that. Just chilling out. Keeping myself sane with that. Because I've had to... Um, like, lock myself away a little, a little bit for the last two weeks. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Someone, someone in our office, um, no idea who, um, got a positive test for COVID nineteen. Damn. Yeah, they're fine. They're fine. Don't worry about that. Like, they only had a like mild case of it. Sure. It's still but, a fuck thing, isn't it? It's like, oh god. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, should be should be out of that ISO two week ISO on Monday. Okay, so that amazing. should be good. Yeah, no no signs of symptoms, so should be fine. That's great. Good to hear that, man. Okay, um, we are indeed live, and we're live on the YouTube as well. Um, so as I said to you guys before, I'm just gonna um, say hi to people that are watching and give a little introduction as to what we're going to be talking about, and then I'll bring you guys in if that's cool with you. No worries, yeah, go for it. Beautiful. So, hello, welcome back to the Bristol Gamers Pride Day. Um, it is JT here, and we are doing the Sounds Queer Part One. And as I mentioned before, um, we this kind of segment is going to be basically how I, what I've named it is kind of how to make a game, or more kind of about the gaming industry, getting an insight with two people, two friends of mine, Sam and Dan. We're just going to be basically talking about what it means to work in the game industry now, kind of some of the difficulties with COVID, and actually what's kind of maybe next for gaming. What what, you know, we're just basically going to fangirl about games. That's that's what we're going to do. That's that's basically what I'm going to do, guys. And actually, one of the first things I wanted to ask you about, because we were talking about it just a second ago, was um, the new Tony Hawk's game that came out today. So you guys have been playing it today? I've been playing it all morning. I think Sam's just downloaded it. I've literally been playing it for the last half an hour before coming on stream, yeah. It's... Is, it, is it good? It's, yeah. 
I I oh yeah. I'm getting too sucked in. I've already 70 percented uh, Pro Scale 1. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Wait, how long have you been playing it for? Uh, since I downloaded it yesterday, I've been playing it. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you downloaded it like a couple of hours ago and you were just like, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> well, I, well. yesterday, so I played it after work and then just a bit this morning after walking the dog. So I haven't really put much into it. But it's just, it's slipping into like nostalgia. Mm. Yeah. Memories that I haven't thought about in a long time. Oh, did yeah. They, did they keep the soundtracks or did they... Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it's got a high blend of like one and two, and then like some new stuff, which is pretty cool. Oh, so, so good. Oh, I'm glad. Some of them, are, I don't think the games would be the same without. Mm. I mean, the soundtracks are just like. I mm. literally part of my music taste as a teenager came from Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. Absolutely. Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like. I'm sure, like everything I listen to is influenced from playing those games. That's <laughs> so cool. Pretty much. I've had that actually uh, before we kind of go on and talk about games development um, a little bit more. Um, that just reminded me of, of actually that happened with Tony Hawk's and then for myself that also happened with the Life is Strange games. <laughs> and like I remember like after finishing Life is Strange 1 I was like I'm so depressed. I'm an indie, <laughs> I'm an indie teenager living in small town America. Um, you know it's just it's it's quite funny like how um, the soundtrack in games, I think more than movies I've watched and more mm. than um, maybe just finding music. Sometimes that kind of that discovery of music through games can actually be huge. Mm. Um, that's something actually for people watching that myself in the next Dance Queer segment at half four, I believe it is. Uh, I'm going to be talking to um, Kaylee. Uh, Kay Lazon, who is a trans woman, who's a musician, and uh, we're going to be talking about representation in games, but we'll probably talk a little bit more about music then. So what I wanted to do with you guys, basically, is first off, kind of introduce yourselves in regards to what you do, what your role is. So if I could start with you, Sam, if you could basically just be like, this is what I do and how long you've been doing it for, and yeah, what, what that job basically entails day to day. Okay, yeah, no worries. So I am a developer my title is just generic games developer for a small indie company um in the center of bristol and we make a lot of web-based stuff so stuff for the bbc like cbb's cbbc websites uh if anyone has any like younger siblings or if they just play them themselves on the website you've probably played one of my games same for cartoon network as well and we recently, last year, with the new Ardman film, created a Nintendo Switch game, which was um, Home Sheep Home Farmageddon Party Edition, which has possibly the longest, most ridiculous title of any that game is, I've worked on. That is a serious name. That yeah. Is like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, like when people do like a, like a jokey, like, you know, Halloween Part 2 Electric Boogaloo, you know, like that kind of, like that's what it sounded like. I love Honestly, that. That sounds great, yeah. to be fair. It started out That's just amazing. as a remastering of Home Sheep Home 2. Mm -hmm. uh, but because they had the new film coming out, we wanted to tie it into the film, so we added more uh, things into it using the engine that we like, had basically made from the old Flash game. Gotcha. And yeah, the title just kept getting longer. <laughs> it's like, we need to add in all these extra SEO words. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that it flags up in the right way. Exactly. No, I, love, I love that though, and I love um, how because I remember that the first time we spoke to Sam, um, mm. and I think like all three of us were together, weren't we? Um, like the first time we met, I think we yeah we all met each other at the same time, and I remember um, just kind of you guys just be like I think it was, it was I think it was you Sam. You were like, oh yeah, you know, I just did this like game like Adventure Time game, and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, that like, was one of my first that they gave me when I came to Mobile Buy. Yeah. Oh man, like it's so funny because my my background is absolutely not games development. It's something that um, I'm always, I guess, more in the line of kind of hobbyist about. As in, it's never been something I've like fully um, uh, engaged in and stuff. And I wouldn't really know where to start with so many levels. Um, 
Well, that's why we're so here. For me, that's well, exactly. Yeah. So for me, that's that's where that is. And I know within Bristol Gamers, for an example, there's a lot of people where that's the case. Mm. And actually, the reason why I wanted to get you guys in as well is because um, one thing I think I've talked to you guys about is it's the same in the music industry. Uh, there is still, in a lot of industries, but particularly in elements of the entertainment industry, there is still a kind of huge swathe of uh, the, the same majority of kind of like cis straight white men um in the industry and so this idea of doing the stream was basically to kind of provide information and demystify the gaming industry for people because both of you guys work at like different different kind of levels and in different companies yeah. so i basically just wanted to be like how do people oh, yeah, actually right. get into gaming like what is that? You know? <laughs> because i genuinely think for certain people industries wise people get maybe a bit i don't know like they, they don't feel like they can join it it's not their kind of um environment it's a bit kind of too like straight boyish i definitely have spoken to friends who've said that they've for an example avoided the music industry um because it's very kind of male centric um or or you know avoided certain elements of their career because they were afraid of being like you know um treated differently basically for being a woman or for being queer um so yeah so sorry i'll move to i'll move to dan actually so dan if you could tell me a little bit about what you do what your role is and where you're at yeah, sure. So I am a generic programmer. Um, that is my job title, programmer. Um, I'm, I'm a game developer and programmer for a company called Endemic Creations, which some people may or may not have heard of. Um, they made the game Plague Inc, which I have worked on quite a lot. Um, but I was mainly involved with the uh, later release Rebel Inc, which I worked on from start to finish. And that's also a mobile game uh, and porting that to PC with um, Rebel Link Escalation, which is on Steam now. That's such a plug. Um, but, no, yeah, go for so... it. Please do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, same as same Sam, uh, based in Bristol, it's kind of small indie company with, um, with a lot of players. Sure. I know as well, because like, both of you guys studied in Bristol for games. Is that correct? Yeah. So. We, yeah, yeah. Um, uh-huh. Yearly Games Technology oh, uh, graduates, uh, same year beginning, same year ending. So, that's where we met, actually. Yeah. Ah, God, yeah. that, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> of course, that makes perfect sense. So, <laughs> so for you guys, in terms of the career of working in games development, I mean, I'm going to jump jump the gun a little bit and say uh, the first love of it would have been from actually playing games and it being a big part of your childhoods, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Massive. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I think like it's kind of cool because I remember like just playing games and being like, one day I want to make a game. Or, like this is what I want to do as I grow up, and it's like, especially I guess for like our generation, maybe it's like it's one of those dreams that people are like, mm, mm, probably won't do that. Mm. So mm. I, I feel like less so now, which is great. Um, That's yeah. really good. Yeah. And I was going to say in terms of I'm wondering you feel about this now. In regards to kind of opportunities um, presenting themselves, mm-hmm. is it is the kind of usual route into working in games, um, working like going to university, doing a degree course? What, what are the kind of usual pathways people take to work in games right now in twenty twenty? I'd say that's the that's the steadiest one. Ah, okay. This, because the big thing about courses like that is that a lot of the times they'll be taught by people who are ex-industry and they'll have connections as well. Mm -hmm. The number one thing you need to get into games is connections. Same with music. Yeah, totally hear that one. Yeah, Which is a shame because you think Mm -hmm. of the standard game developer and they're not the most social of animals, (laughs) as you can imagine. But you just need to... That's the the golden ticket, really. Networking. You need to... Go where the wild things are. So to things like in Bristol, we have the Games Hub where you Mm -hmm. can meet people, get into like group chats. I know that there are a few industry group, um, industry like nationwide group chats, especially for audio. I think there's a few going around. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You might be interested in those. I will definitely be jumping into those. Like, (laughs) hi. Hi, Henry. Yeah. Um, Mm. So actually, I, I was really interested in what you said about the Bristol Hulk because myself mm. and you have talked about it before. Um, I don't know if you're kind of in, involved in it 
as well, Dan. Are you involved in the Bristol Game Hub as well? No, I'm I'm such I'm an outsider. I was gonna I would jump <laughs> the same thing as Sam. I'd be like, yeah, support your local scene and all this, but I'm I'm not really involved with um, Bristol Games Hub. Um, oh, okay. Um, I would like to be. It's just having the time to do so. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. If you don't yeah. mind, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna inquire a little bit about that because I think viewers for this stream might find that really interesting. As I said all about those access points. Uh, mm. And then Dan, I'd love to come to you and, and actually break down what it means to be a programmer. And mm -hmm. then we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that. So so Sam, what is Bristol Games Hub? Because obviously we know we've got Bristol Gamers, which is this yeah. LGBT gaming community um, and that we've kind of built and curated and we're kind of taking it to the virtual world. But what is Bristol Games Hub exactly? So it's a, I haven't been for a while, so it might have changed. <laughs> um, but These things do. It's it's a small space of a few floors in Stokes Croft mm -hmm. where you get, they will host talks and nights where you can talk about things that are more of like a, what we refer to as a higher, higher level things like sure. the philosophy behind things, the like design archetypes, like um, then you can get more meta talks as well, like people talking about how you organize making like indie games and stuff. Then they also host a few micro studios that might be like three or four people, like right, tiny okay. little companies like that. And anyone can go along to these events. Like you don't have to be, you don't have to have any gamer cred any qualifications anything any like that effects. you can just you can just go along listen to it if you're interested talk to the people mm -hmm. networking side of it and just find out what's going on all around like that different awesome. parts of the industry really yeah, that sounds amazing so how do people join up to that is there is there a facebook group is there a discord like how do people kind of get involved find out when events and meetups are at the moment yeah i believe they have a facebook group Okay. Um, by now they probably have a discord chat because mm. when I when I used to go to some of the talks a little while ago it was before discord really took off kind of took off yeah. to say yeah but, um, it's really gone big now right discord yeah, it's kind oh, of amazing yeah, yeah. massive I'm Dan do you actually I was uh, going to ask you I mean Dan do you, you use discord much uh, yeah I'm actually a part of a few discord like um, programming groups um I can't name loads off the top of my head, but if hmm. I see a link to join one, I just join one, and I, I'm I'm a massive lurker. I don't really like sound set about <laughs> being social. I'm not very social. I just I read, I trawl through and lurk, um, maybe sometimes comment on things. I was going to say, are you the you're the lurker in in a 100%. group chat? You're the person that sees 100%. messages and doesn't reply. Aren't you? Hundred percent. He is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I, I knew it. If How did I, I know that? The answer to something, I will post. If no one responds, I will I will I will help out or <laughs> yeah. Um, not i, I just you know, I feel, I feel so embarrassed when i communicate on those things <laughs> do you know how i know that as well is uh for people who obviously won't know this when we were setting this chat up i was like oh guys i'd love to get you on uh the bristol gamers sounds queer chat talk about this um we like dan i think you were the first one to message and then afterwards it was just like you were seeing messages and just being like <laughs> thumbs up and i just love that because a lot of my friends who were like who are very much more like edge about or or not like kind of like more outwardly social they do exactly the same thing and yeah. it's so funny because a couple of years ago if people did that to me before i learned more about people being kind of you know, introverts and how they would express that. I used to be like, wow, this is so rude. Why would someone do, but like, because I just don't, because I'm very much the opposite. Um, <laughs> but then like my introverted friends were like, I'm just agreeing. I don't need to say <laughs> hi or yes, you know? So it was quite funny. Um, and what I wanted to ask you, Dan, actually, while, while we're kind of on you, as it were, is you said before you were kind of programmer. Um, what, what, yeah, I think a couple of we were asking in the YouTube, what what kind of programmer, what kind of languages? Uh, and just could you kind of give more detail about maybe uh, what drew you to, to programming and gaming rather than another field? Yeah, sure. So uh, I kind of just always had like a love affair with um, programming. I started programming when I was like, I think I probably wrote my first program when I was like 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. like I used to get way back when, when there was a thing, you'd get programming magazines and it would have tutorials and you would oh read magazine cool. articles and go side. No, that's stuff. really cool. I like that. Uh, so I kind of always had this like um, love interest with it. Um, when I went to college, it was like the first opportunity that I could do like academic kind of course, which was computing. And 
obviously I love games. When I went to uni, I was like, you could do degrees in games technology, which is uh, quite far different from games design. I'll put out as well. It's, it's more based on the science of making mm. games, which sure. is programming, essentially. Uh, so I have quite like, I'm not, when I say programmer, I'm a bit of a fraud because I don't have a pure <laughs> I don't have a You're pure not a fraud, so be silly. I don't have a pure computer science background, um, but I've been kind of like trained in, in, in the games technology side of programming now where um, I kind of understand how to manipulate machines to do what I want to do. <laughs> I guess it's like, manipulate um, machines. Yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the nice way to describe my job. Um, so... <laughs> Well, just to, just to clarify, when you said that, so obviously that's that's something you've kind of, uh, the, the computer side of it, as it were, uh, or the machine side of it, uh, is something you've learned more. So when you first started, what, what did your role look like? What was that more like at the start? As in like my professional career? Um, um, as Well, as a programmer, so you, because it's interesting, because I, I did never think of it like that with the, um, <laughs> the idea that obviously you were now almost like building things. When you yeah. came into programming, was that more the kind of coding of things or? Well, so I think I do is programming, but like, I guess like, I, I think what you're saying, like, I think the first thing for like, probably like almost like five, 10 years almost is uh, programming is consisting of staring at a black console window uh, and seeing yep. things being output and being like, hmm, cool. Um, <laughs> those, those, they Very are, exciting. Like, yeah. Building blocks. Obviously, like, I think now, especially if you're interested in getting into games and games programming, the tools that you have available to learn that and see things and actually do like game stuff like from day one almost for programming is, is way more accessible than when I started. Sure. Uh, and obviously, I'm just I'm going to throw out like, you know, you've got your Unity engine and, and Unreal engine. Mm. And the amount of like learning resources and, and like YouTube courses and whatever. And again, like Discord groups that will take in your like newbie that knows nothing and, and like kind of mm. nurture. As I, I've noticed that's like great. It's great. I've noticed that's like a big thing at the moment, uh, especially if, like if you find a YouTuber that teaches, they have like a Discord community that will pull you in. And oh, great. Of, yeah. Um, yeah. Game development is a nice space. Uh, mm. kind of arcing to what you were ask you saying earlier about kind of more inclusion um we definitely do need more diversity in the games industry um, yeah I, I can recognize that it's a it's a massive shame and yeah oh it's it's much the same in in a lot of industries and i think yeah. i think it's um like anything the reason i kind of bring it up obviously besides it being topical to uh, bristol pride and bristol gamers and a lot of what the, you know the work i do in in music and activism is just that it's um it's not even that we have to talk about it like oh isn't it terrible it's just <laughs> important to have these conversations isn't it because mm. like like i was saying about demystifying the games industry we're also demystifying um you know those not demystifying the barriers but we're kind of looking at the barriers that might exist to people in terms of as a a consumer of games or as a gamer mm. you know um and you know and obviously you know for an example a, a perception of uh, you know girls who game and stuff that is still prevalent in certain kind of communities so breaking those kinds of things down but also having communities like the ones that we have uh at bristol gamers to kind of use gaming to to join people together mm. um which obviously uh obviously gaming as an activity generally across the board is something that you know, a lot of people do by themselves and they, they go into these huge worlds and or whatever it is that they do in the game. Um, but actually another big element of gaming that I think a lot of people maybe miss out on is that social element of when somebody picks up a game or they can play it online with someone or next to each other on a controller and they can play something together. And that's actually mm. kind of an amazing thing. Um, so I guess what I wanted to kind of ask you guys is what do you think the gaming industry could do in a, a very broad sense, uh, or things that you think it could do better to kind of in, to a kind of better diversity and inclusion. Mm. Uh, do you think there's specific areas that need to be addressed more than others? Just any general thoughts that you have that'd be really interesting. So uh, I think the statistic right now is that inside the game industry, one in five people are um, part of the LGBTQ plus like sphere. Of things oh, okay. but the thing is that's a that's a surprisingly high number mm. however i think that the one thing that the game industry really is let down on is that you don't see that reflected in the output yes you need more of that in the output 
hugely, especially when you get to like these AAA like studios. Mm-hmm. I think that a lot of the problems with the AAA industry and AAA studios in general is more of a like wider capitalism problem. To be honest, right? Like, okay. yeah. They're hey, listen, very. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wasn't wasn't one of the board members for I can't remember whether it was Activision or Ubisoft was related to Donald Trump actually? Right. So you can see that the people who are calling the shots at those like AAA companies are still like the old white cis men. Yeah, I hear you. Kind of thing. Of course. Because the the corporations, at the end of the day, these especially these bigger studios, Hugely, and the way yeah. and the way that they they work will be just like any other traditional kind of business model. Will be, you know, your board of executives and you know mm-hmm. people calling the shots um, are people who've been able who have the much more likely been able to gain capital and gain money and gain inheritance, which obviously, as we know, uh, statistically are are yeah straight cis kind of white men. Um, so in terms of so that's that's really really interesting because I, I like that idea that it's not necessarily um, or at least for the most part that the employment element of gaming um, mm-hmm. isn't kind of uh, discriminatory in in the in the famous sense, but that the media output of gaming and games in the way it represents characters or the way that it shows things is slightly more limited, um, and that's kind of interesting, right? Uh, I was yeah. going to say, Dan, do you have any kind of particular kind of thoughts on this in terms of diversity or was it similar to sam or? yeah i mean i was i would literally have said the pretty much the same thing um mm. i think like especially with uh touching on kind of like triple a companies and stuff obviously a lot of those companies are, are businesses at the end of the day so they they do what sells um mm-hmm. so it's not, it could not necessarily be a problem in terms of like game studios i imagine there's a lot of people that want to make that kind of um game where they represent certain you know, um, characters and and whatever from the LGBT sphere, um, but they can potentially because it's not you know marketable. I, I think is the mm. term we're looking for. I mean, uh, I'm not that super knowledgeable, but from like kind of my like at, at kind of a distance and one where like the indie scene can be quite a bit better with uh, things like being represented. Yeah, that's the next thing I was going to ask about. Yeah. Yeah, like I swear, like um. I can't remember what it's called, but I swear there's like a game about like a pansexual bear or something. I remember like <laughs> uh, I was like interested in playing one. So Me? Things like that that just kind of crop up, which is which is awesome. But it's a shame that um, kind of more interesting things like that don't get seen. In, sure. Um, yeah, I think it's called Into the Woods, A Night in the Woods. That like, rings a bell. Why yeah. have I heard of that? I don't know why. It just came to my I mind. I remember. It. Uh, but I think that was like came out a couple of years ago. But yeah, um, I, th- I think it's an interesting one. I don't think, uh, especially with like employment. I-, I think maybe what you said earlier about maybe it's more with people being turned away because they feel like they might be discriminated against. But in terms of my experience with people I work with, um, I mean, I- I'm actually very fortunate. I work with two people that are trans, or have done work with two people that are trans as well in my current job, hmm. um, which was wonderful to like have that diversity firsthand and, and work with those people absolutely um, yeah so but i think yeah i mean maybe as an industry we, we need to reach out more like instead of just having a line that says like we, we accept everyone it's <laughs> we're inclusive it's like yeah we're well, inclusive but <laughs> like I, do you know what that reminds me of it's funny that you say that i love that kind of like um it's like those memes and stuff about like you know guys being nice guys and it's like <laughs> well, i'm a nice guy and it's like nice should be like the standard that's yeah. like being like well i breathe it's like <laughs> yeah like no, i okay. i'm not you know i'm not like a horrible i'm not i don't murder people i i just have respect <laughs> it's like well we all probably at some point would like to murder someone but most of us refrain very strongly because of our morality <laughs> So yeah, but that, that's what that reminds me of actually. When you when you said that, that kind yeah. of that kind of thing. Actually, the the one thing that you said then that was really interesting. I think that key word that that almost both of you both of you kind of angled towards and Dan said was this idea of like marketability. Mm. And that word, I think, is is super, especially from myself. Uh, part of my background is, is in the digital marketing thing, and part of what I do musically as well. Without kind of hammering that one 
is uh or what i try to do within my music is very kind of sometimes anyway very explicitly um a very kind of forward express kind of queer identity yeah. in a way that you know, isn't seen as much you know as mm. as other identities etc um and i have been told by industry professionals myself um that my music was too gay or that the way i was representing what i was doing uh, wasn't going to sell very well because uh, not even that it was about not even that it was my songs were about men or anything like that but that the way i represented myself i sometimes wore makeup i sometimes did this they were like <gasps> no no you know i remember this is no joke right so this is this is this is the kind of industry breakdown and this is not me just you know ranting this is to to kind of mm. make a point uh, or to to talk about what we're talking about because there are definitely you know barriers we still need to fight through I, uh, in some of my songs, I use my kind of falsetto range and I was told by a producer that I'd started to work with a couple of years ago on the project that, um, I shouldn't use my falsetto voice because it's, this is actually, it was like a backhanded compliment because it was so convincing that it sounded like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, number one, I don't mind sounding like a woman. Yeah. Uh, number two, like, like the point is, and number two, like, thanks. <laughs> you know, it was just kind of like, hmm. Uh, but he was like, yeah, I don't think you should use your falsetto because we want people to think like you're a man and this is what you do. And I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, please, like, where, where is this 1800s like mindset coming from? Like, where are we? Are we in 2020? No, well, it was 2017 or something. Um, so I guess the point I was kind of making with that is, uh, or the, the, the next kind of angle I wanted to make um, was about that, that essence of kind of marketability and mm. something that you mentioned, which I think as almost where I was going to go with it was about how it's, we've seen similar things in the music industry, fully mm. enough in gaming, indie studios, um, have really risen up in a lot of different ways over the past few years and have just generally come out with really interesting, engaging games that mm. really maybe, uh, well, certainly the larger companies would never have taken a risk on. So I'd just be kind of interested to hear from you guys about a game either your studio has been involved with or one that you love from another indie studio that you were like, I love, you know, that you just really appreciated because you were like, I didn't think I'd see a game like this or I didn't think mm -hmm. I'd see a character or a story mm -hmm. that, that that included this event or this idea. So if I could start with you, Sam, if you could, if you've got anything on your mind. Hellblade, send you a sacrifice. That's my oh, one. So it's, it's what we call like a double A game. Okay. So it's an indie studio that just made a... A big triple A looking game. It's something called like triple B. A triple B. Triple B. Is it sometimes called triple B? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so send you a sacrifice. Fantastic game. Uh, play it with headphones. Okay. Because it uses a lot of like binaural things. Uh, <laughs> what the themes of it, because I'm I'm quite um I'm quite involved in like mental health stuff it mm. represents a um lady who's having um like <sighs> voices she has schizophrenia basically right, okay. um she's this old um viking warrior lady who oh, constantly okay. has these like whispers to her in her head and as you're playing like you can hear it too and it doesn't really? demonize it like a lot of other media does for yeah, like horror it's like ooh spooky person hears voices yeah yeah exactly. yeah yeah like like you can you can tell that like it should be that the mental illness is something that she definitely has to struggle with but it's not what defines her I kind of thing yeah is it almost um, like building it like like the, the you you're in her shoes in yes yeah 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 Building usually and it, yeah it, it definitely gets across how it can feel as well got you and it's a fantastic little game i think it's quite cheap now so sounds I'd brilliant. definitely check it out definitely i'm wondering yeah. as well if anybody in the chat on um, just to, to come back to the stream for a second if anybody has played the game 
let us know what you know below or have played a game from the studio. Uh, if not, then at the end of this, uh, a couple of people were asking for your guys' kind of Instagrams and stuff. Uh, so uh, at the end of this, if you like, tell me what it is if you want to. If not, obviously, totally fine. Yeah, sure. And I'll drop it down into the message below and into the Discord chat, etc. Uh, so we'll do that at the end. Anyway, we're still, we're still going to talk to you guys for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. If that's okay, if I can grab you for a little bit. <laughs> Um, no worries. Yeah, so so Dan, what about yourself in that regard? Was there a particular indie game uh, or any kind of moment that really stuck out for you? I'm so boring when it comes to like uh, something <laughs> like awesome thing. I, I no, don't no, know. No. Go for it. <laughs> the I mean, like the obvious one really is more recently, I guess, with um, the Last of Us Two and kind of the the relationship that was explored with yeah um, Dina, I'm Dina, yeah. I was like totally invested in that and I just loved like lapped up every moment of their like relationship being built on that and that throughout that game and mm. I feel like that was the first time I've ever like really believed in like a, a, a relationship in a game mm. um, and I wanted to be in that relationship as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, I know exactly what you mean, yeah. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I guess if we're also talking kind of in terms of like uh like lgbt representation in games I, again on on that side i, I know it's like a it's, it's kind of there but i think like i really like stardew valley that you can just have like same-sex relationships like that's mm. something that i always thought was awesome because i could like live out my fantasies with sebastian and elliot <laughs> I love that you were like, I I could marry whatever characters I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I was like straight away, I was like, wait, you can you can marry guys in this game? Um But yeah, that's I I haven't got a good example of Sam. No, no, mate, honestly. No, both both of those are brilliant. Actually, I mean you, you make a really good point because I mean the first game that you mentioned, Last of Us Part Two, especially having that you know, I mean, that is a triple A game. And actually, uh -huh. the core of that story, I mean, it, you know, people really kind of, um, there was a lot of kind of discourse around it where, oh, you know, the way, the way people basically being like, oh, there's, you know, it's, you know, all this like, uh, you know, all this, this gay relationship stuff going on in games, you know, and it was like, mate, do you know how many times I've seen like a straight relationship or a straight sex scene for like absolutely no reason? It's like, it's, let's just show some ass. Let's I, just I, show I, some tit. And you're like, why? I think that, like, <laughs> the most about that is it kind of points out the people you want to avoid. <laughs> or, like, you know, <laughs> the people that have a problem with oh, it. Oh, yeah. you just like, you're like, okay, well, I've got no time for you. Um, yes. Because <laughs> it was like, I, I was just like, when I played it, I, I, was, I, I mute myself from the world when I play games like that because I don't want any spoilers. And then I kind of come back around and I'm like, wait, people had a problem with that? Like, <laughs> I'm like what? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's this, yeah, I know what you mean. Because it's this, this individual thing. Um, I'm coming back to kind of The Last of Us 2, as we're saying, there was that, the fact that it's a triple A game, um, mm. I think is, is really impressive. And one thing that I'm going to be talking uh, in, the, as I mentioned, the next stream, half four, with my friend Kaylee, who's a trans woman is uh, one thing she was saying to me is about, for an example, customization options in games and the fact that uh, she herself would would dress and would form her body, her character's body, in a way that was, was hers, mm. you know, for the first time. And actually, when you think about all of the types of media, um, you know, even, you know, music, whether that's film, whether that's TV, that's not something that you can do in those things mm. because that element of creation and then playing someone or something within space uh or to you know make things happen or within a storyline uh, or to make or to make a storyline as it goes based on your character um i just like i still i still find that amazing and uh, i don't know if you guys know much or have played much apex legends but i'd be really interested to to hear if you have um but there are there was a there was a again a backlash from that because EA and Respawn, obviously these big companies, uh, released two characters in um, Apex Legends that were straight from the off like original characters that were LGBTQ. Mm. So we have Bloodhound that is a non-binary character, uh, the voice actor and the, um, the all the kind of writers and developers for that character, which is like. Bloodhound's a non-binary character. Every bit of written written thing about them uses they them pronouns. It's like the way where, where they are from, the kind of their part of they they don't use binary gender, which obviously we see in other cultures in the world here as well, in the same way. Um 
and then they have Gibraltar, who is this big, I think he's he's kind of Maui. Um, and he's this big tank looking guy who's like armored as shit, really tall, really big, really like lovely and warm and ah, brother and all this and slapping people on the back. And he's gay and just like very much like written in the law, but it's not like hidden, you know, in the law. Mm. There's like voice lines and stuff that are said where he references his, his ex-partner, Nick. And I remember playing no this <laughs> and just being number like, one, I, was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, well, number one, I've never, I've never had a non-binary oh, character so it represented myself hmm. as you can see by my flag behind <laughs> me. um i didn't make it obvious at all um, <laughs> you know i've never seen a, a character that that was like that and obviously there was discourse with people people constantly kind of misgender bloodhound and they're like oh it's a woman because it's a woman voice actress and hmm. these are all like parts of discussions um but i the, the one thing I, I wanted to kind of get across to you and ask you guys about was we talked a lot about how indie games are really pushing for these representations, but one thing that is really exciting, I guess, if we think of the, the kind of mainstream of the, the AAA titles, is we are starting to see more That's solid, that. diverse okay. representation of different characters and stories, even in big title games. And yeah. That's really exciting, Master. right? Mm -hmm. Especially in, this is going to be really surprising, CD Projekt Red's upcoming Cyberpunk 2077. Because CD Projekt Red do not have a good track record when it comes to LGBT things. They... Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Um, however... <laughs> Everybody watching this stream is furiously Googling, yeah. like, why, what did they do? What did they yeah. Do? They, I'm they, they, yeah, man, I'm going to Google that. I want to know. They tweeted some less than savoury things. Mm, I think it's ringing bells. But the thing that's interesting to me about C um, Cyberpunk is that they said in a press release a few months ago that when it comes to character creation, you don't select a binary gender. You, ju you can still, you can instead just change all the different body parts as, like, on each, on each part, really. That's which is, amazing. Yeah. So... Your, your character is never, like, nailed to either side of the, like, gender binary mm. that they want to put in, that other games want to put in. I mean, that, you can just... that's incredible, right? I mean, like, I'm not even doing be... it like, like, well done, Cyberpunk. Like, but it's mm. that's incredible. It, it, like, there's it's a lot of potential there because, sure. like, part of the Cyberpunk genre is kind of questioning, like, how you, like, basically just questioning gender binaries and questioning like whether we can go beyond and become who we are like mm. fully through the use of more like technology and or like transhumanism and yeah and yeah, like yeah. That. stuff yeah, like that folks. yeah but i think it'll be interesting to see if cd, Pro CD project red do go down that route because they could go down that route but they could equally just go on the everything's neon Mm. kind of <laughs> cyberpunk thing yeah, yeah. everything's Woo! neon and i shoot lasers and that person is a robot <laughs> they yeah, could do that well. but we'll see if they really like grip that opportunity because you know what that would be genuinely if they release that as part of a, a game engine thing it may seem small to to other people who that doesn't bother but i can just imagine the amount of trans and non-binary gender fluid mm. etc people who will go wait I can construct a character that looks just like me. That, yeah. You know, and it's not even like being like, oh, you know, they're male, they're female, as in like, it's not even about designating the parts, but as in the, their body shape, their way they, you know, the way that their hair is on their body, the way that their facial structure looks. Yeah. You know, people who do not fit into that binary, you know, whether they've had surgeries or not, or hormonal replacements or not. You know, people are on the spectrum of the the physicality of that of their gender expression. Yeah. And so just the ability to to represent that in a game engine is like just amazing. So um, that's really exciting, actually, because I didn't know about that. So it that's also really cool to hear. It also means that you know that there aren't going to be any um, like binary locked off choices in the game. I like, hate that. In a lot of other oh. games, you'd get like um, <laughs> if you are. If you chose to be a male character, you can only do these kind of things. If you chose yeah, to be a female, these character. hairstyles they have to be like no longer than this. Yeah, yeah. and I I remember playing games where like the the hairstyles and the hair colors were specific. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? As in, yeah, like, yeah. you could only choose, like, red or blue. Like, like oh, no, sorry. So you could always choose, like, for the, the girls' hair, there were all these multicolored options. And for guys' hair, it was, like, brunette, black, <laughs> blonde. Blonde. Ginger. Oh. And it was like, yeah. wow. <laughs> Oh, it was like, oh, do you know those memes? It's like, ah, yes, the four genders. That's what it was like. <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah. Ah, yes, the four genders. Ginger, <laughs> ginger, black hair, brunette. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what I wanted to do with you guys was, uh, obviously, we talked a little bit about your jobs, and we talked mm-hmm. a little bit about kind of the industry and where we think things are going with representation of games. Um, what I want to know, just as a more like, I guess, more fun trivia element, is. <laughs> What games are you really looking forward to that you know are coming out? We've mentioned obviously Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. Are there any titles that are coming out that you, as a developer, as a as lifelong gamers, that you are like, <laughs> please release? Like which ones? Like I want to know. Hmm. Um. Go on, Dan. You you take this one first. I need to <laughs> think. Dan. I played games from like five years ago at the most. Time. <laughs> <laughs> I think- I think one thing you'll find if 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 you ever get in the games industry is that you, you slowly stop keeping up with the games industry as opposed to it. You just, you <laughs> Same with music. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't worry. I, I mean, for me, it, it was like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was like the game that was like I actually pre-ordered. I haven't pre-ordered a game since I think The Last of Us Two was the one last one I pre-ordered. Um, <laughs> I don't think so... I've ever pre-ordered a game. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, I'm lying. I very rarely do. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm quite excited for obviously PlayStation Five to come out and to see what comes with that. Actually, tell like I know what I'm excited for. I'm excited. Oh, next... go on. I know I'm, I'm excited for the next um, Vampire the Masquerade. Oh um, yes. Ooh. I'm excited for that to come out. Yeah. Um, when is, is there a bit of a rumor as to when that might come out? The twelfth of never. It keeps getting delayed. I think it's a PS5 title now. So hopefully next year or the year after. But if you don't know about masquerade to take a look at it and mm. maybe play the first one because it's a horrible mess that's amazing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i like that but what about the community yourself, uh i was gonna say about um okay. vampire the masquerade bloodlines one there's a brilliant community patch that fixes yeah, most of the things because that original game was just rushed out incomplete <laughs> i hate that i i love how there's like we, they have obviously the same with. There's always something with Bethesda games, isn't there? Mm. Um, some more than others, let's just say. Um, <laughs> and with obviously with with Skyrim and stuff, just I love how creative the modding mm. community yeah. can be. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's just incredible. Like to be fair, I wouldn't even know where to start as a mod. I'd be like, what? Like these people develop <laughs> entire game engines, and like these people are like, don't worry, Bethesda, I got you. And they like just mod the game, and I'm like, what? How do you do that? So I love like to you guys, you probably, you know, in, in some way as well, it's it's that it's that elusive like, how do you even do that? You know, that some people say to me in music, they're like, How do you even like produce that track? And I'm like, mm. Oh well, I just do it. Whereas to me, the the things that you guys do, um, you know, especially like just people that generally in the industry, it's person. like, What? <laughs> how do you do that thing? Um so yeah, so Sam, what were you sorry, your kind of game with uh the game that you're really looking forward to? Yeah. Title, you're like, please release <laughs> anything Anything by Hideo Kojima. Oh I am oh, don't make me cry. I am a slut for Hideo Kojima. I am yeah. I wanna I wanna get that hashtag trending. Hashtag slut for Kojima. Slut for Kojima. Are you a snakey slut for Kojima? Oh yeah. Oh, Definitely. Yeah. All day. <laughs> I I, th- I think that um, actually, now that you mention it, I think Snake Eater is my favorite game of all time. Yeah, it's probably on my top ten list. Yeah. Can anybody, exactly. if anybody's watching this <laughs> and they've played Snake Eater, that bit where he's climbing up that long ass ladder and mm. Snake Eater's playing like the acapella version, iconic. There, there. I I did talk about just that ladder scene for for ages. <laughs> like honestly, it's. It, it, <laughs> It has some really good like game design like it's elements true. in there because you've just been through this massive sniper battle against the end in this massive space. Everything like mm. it's super tense. You're making me want to play it now. It's, it's super tense at times. It's super loud all of a sudden, and then you go into this tiny little box room where you just relax, just reflect on what's been happening throughout the game. While they softly play back like a high reverb version of the theme, 
and you can just chill and just it is beautiful i love mm. how iconic that uh, scene is but i remember when that game first came out and like everyone or well, in my sphere of bitching about that scene and the joke of like getting the elastic band around your controller and like the other <laughs> just like making a cup of tea and coming back and you're like <laughs> that ladder is the greatest boss fight in gaming. That's one thing actually I wanted to almost kind of, I guess maybe a good thing to end on soon would be that interesting thing. We've kind of touched on it. Um, and obviously you guys being involved in games development, you will have seen this. And we've definitely seen this as well in music. So I think this parallel is quite interesting <laughs> that the more that, you know, indie developers are getting interest and power and, you know, the, the the kind of technological advancements which help everyone, mm. you know, AAA companies making these, you know, well, obviously all companies, but AAA companies can be, make these huge budget, huge, massive mm. games because they know that people are going to buy them now because the game market is very hungry for these experiences. Uh, and like gaming, people are more likely to game now than maybe 10 years ago as well. It's less likely a geeky hobby and it's now something that people do in some way. Um, and so I'm really excited to see you know, just how kind of diverse games become in with things mm. like game engines, with graphic styles. Um, I love the fact that now you can, well, I turn on my even my PlayStation 4 and I have, you know, uh, a survival online horror game, Dead by Daylight. I have Apex Legends, this like huge budget, you know, first person shooter. Um, I have all these little indie games like Oxen Free, uh, Fall Guys, obviously, which has come out, which is just really bright and fun in that field of like online gaming. Um, and they're just kind of almost more obvious ones, as you said. There's, excuse me, even more obscure games. And so, um, what I, I guess what I wanted to ask you guys in relation to that was, um, is this something in the kind of the, the, the game sphere of making games or um, or the style of games that maybe you want to see come back? Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe more Tony Hawk's games. <laughs> oh. I think that we're going to very suddenly see a change in the next few years because I think that the AAA industry will crash in the next few years. Really? Like, I, it's becoming hugely oversaturated. You can see mm. the huge backlash that have happened to some of the, like, safe, safe bet AAA games that yeah. are coming out. And people are hungry for more, right? People are, people are hungry for more, like, diverse stuff like mm. overwatch and apex legends mm. stuff like that and i think that either the studios are gonna have to realize that and change what they're outputting mm. or they're gonna crash i see so you think That's this is quite a, a kind of a, a tenuous time in terms mm. of you know obviously i mean you, you look at the, the profits for a lot of these companies and they're doing pretty well but actually things can change very fast because lots of companies are doing quite well yeah, I I think um, Jim Sterling is someone that I follow in terms of getting industry news. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim has actually recently come out as um, non-binary as well, which is lovely. I mean, yeah. legends, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Me, Jim, legends. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's amazing. Jim, Jim has been saying that, and I and I agree with him that there's been an ever increasing bubble. And these AAA companies aren't happy with making a lot of money. They have to make all of the money mm. or none of the money mm. kind of thing. And yeah. people like people are struggling. People have less disposable income. You can't expect people to like buy a sixty dollar game or sixty no. pound game and then do microtransactions on top of it. It's like just, ouch. And with the PS five, they're upping the price of games as well. So As they always do, yeah. It's, it's going to come back to bite them. It's just a matter of when the bubble bursts, really. Yeah, it's always about that. I mean, again, we see this in other industries. I'd be interested to see, actually, quickly, if any, anyone in the chat is feeding, feeding in about this. Ah, oh, beautiful. Oh, there's been a couple of um, couple of questions, which I'll ask just at the end. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, I find that, that interesting, that whole like concept of, you know, having to... Yeah, the industry having to change. And as I keep mentioning the music industry, but it is so funny speaking to you guys like, yeah, this is going to be happening and that's changing. And like, we're seeing the same parallels. It's, it's quite creepy, actually, in different ways. So, Dan, I mean, I wanted to ask you the same kind of question. Is, is there anything that you think about 
uh, the industry that might need to to change um, or something that you're kind of like thinking where you know where the where the industry is going to be in like five years time what are we what are we going to be seeing what's going to be what's going to be happening do you think i, I think it's hard so I, I feel like it's less predictable um because like i said it's a, it's a marketable thing so it's what it's what the consumer is going to buy really so it kind sure. of go with what wherever that trend goes sure. i mean me personally like the thing i hate the most about games industry is like this uh um, kind of like make it better, make the same game but make it better kind of thing. And I, I'd really mm. like to see that kind of taper and, and end um, because I think, you know, there, there's a there's only so much refinement and, and, you know, people trying to actually explore new things and, and new games and new ideas, new characters. Because um, I, I do, I don't, like, like I said, I, I really get excited for new games as such because it, it does feel quite cookie cutter a lot of the time. But I mean, that does do huge discredit and, and maybe I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I do pretty much pick up every like PS4 kind of big release that interests mm. me. But um, it'd, be, it'd be nice just to kind of see more like, instead of like constant iteration and improvement on, on like titles right. to actually have like... Like a variation on a theme, yeah. Yeah, like actually make something new. But I, I, I don't know how, how we can do that as, a, as, a, as a such, I guess. Well, I, I think as we've almost been kind of saying, haven't we? the the demand The demand of the consumer will be the biggest one, and mm. I think as as Sam was kind of saying that that really solid point of, well, if people aren't buying things, then the companies are going to have no choice but to actually go, what is it that people actually want? You mm. know, and they'll have to stop and think. And it's actually been the same with, again, I keep using comparables, but there's been a similar thing happen with the music industry, or I certainly have it where. I, you know, I always say as a more general thing, like I love pop music. I mean, I love all types of music. But I, lo- I love pop music. It's brilliant and what it does and, and, and all the kind of elements of it and all its diversity. Um, but, in the, and I, and, you know, part of the music that I make is within that pop realm, mm. but I still criticize the cookie cutter elements of the industry that is, is, is doing that pristine market refinements as yeah. you guys were saying of just like let's do it again but slightly different <laughs> you know and you're just like yeah. yeah great woo you know not seen that before um and it's all about that like you know the algorithmic type approach to things like well last time we had one gay character and it was received really well so this time we're gonna have 10 you know and it's just <laughs> like that's not really the approach that you should have generally about anything surely in these things um so yeah, that that's really cool. I just want to ask you guys uh, some questions have been asked in the stream. Uh, oh, firstly, um, someone was asking uh, what are the guests' into instas and Twitter. So obviously, I can write them down below. But if you guys want to shout them out now, in case people want to search you guys uh, or search your companies, it's whatever works best mm-hmm. for you. If you've not preferred them to have your personal instas, so Sam, what details do you? Sure, have? I I don't do Twitter. Which I think is, yeah, I, I, um, I look after myself too well. Um, <laughs> so go for my Insta, which mm-hmm. I, I don't post on hugely, but it's s dot e n d e a n. Beautiful. And new, the maybe the games company that you that you work for, if if they yeah. have a, a a presence somewhere. Uh. Not hugely, to be honest. Um, just Mobile Pi um, okay. is the company. Just a quick Google, we'll find them. Uh, we haven't updated the website since about three or four years ago. So. Okay. <laughs> they're not. They're not very social media, really. Hmm. The company that I work for might not necessarily need to, you know. No, it's no, it's a lot of agency work, really. Yeah, that, of course that makes sense. So it's not really about. Yeah, promoting yourself in the same way. Um, yeah. So the the oh, and yourself, Dan. I'm sorry to disappoint everyone, but I'm a tinfoil hatter. <laughs> I'm dead online. Oh, really? Do you not have much of an online presence? Uh, no, I, I I nuked. I quit Twitter. Um, my oh, okay, yeah. Private, um, and I don't use Facebook. That's fine. <laughs> With your, if you yeah, could just tell people. Hat, so. If you could just remind people of the the kind of company name that you work for, if you'd want to, uh, yeah, just so, so people can look up them and look at their work. Yeah, so I work for a company called Endemic Creations. That's N-D-E-M-I-C Creations. Um, and yeah, 
that's that's who I'm currently working for and the games I make you'll find up there. Um there we we have a social like person so there's a lot of kind of stuff that gets put out there and um Rebel Link itself is still being updated. Mm-hmm. So if you want to kind of follow along and play the stuff that I'm currently making, that's a good way to do it. Amazing. Uh, the last question I wanted to ask you guys, just that we've had in the chat, mm-hmm. is um, it's more of a general question. It's it's do you need general programming skills, um, or are they kind of specialist areas? So I think what this what this person is asking is when you go into game development and programming, yeah, is it would you would you prefer somebody to go in and be like, I'm really really good at Unity, or would it be better for somebody to have a bit of a jack of all trades of, of general programming skills? What what do you think is the best approach? Right. I would say the best thing you could do as a programmer is to literally do everything you can. Uh, <laughs> Jack of all trades. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm personally, because I work for a small company, I'm a generalist. I don't really have a special field at the moment. Um, so I currently use Unity uh, predominantly, but I also use a lot of other things, mm. um, depending on what projects I'm working on. Uh, if Unity is what you're interested in, then then follow that. I would say in terms of like development, your Unreal and your Unity kind of engines is where the industry is at right now. So if you're if you're wanting to get into industry, um, being basically focused on Unity is not going to really damage you. The pretty much every job I see ever will, will be a Unity job or a job that's in. That is my phone. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. So yeah, be Unity or Unreal. Just kind of follow. But from from those kind of things. Programming is amazing in the sense that it's very transferable. So whatever you mm. do and learn in one thing, just because it's in another language, doesn't mean that the kind of paradigms, um, techniques you as such won't like inhibit you. You can transfer those things. Um, Got you. So, yeah. Oh, massively, yeah. I, I agree with that. You just got to make things. Just to, um, <laughs> just make things. Just, 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 just make it. things. Like, yeah. um, just... <laughs> Follow some Unity tutorials or some Unreal tutorials. Take it as fast or as slow as you want. I think the all you need really is to know the like code fundamentals of like what we call object oriented programming. So if you take like a foundational, our first language was C plus plus. Right. Oh yeah, that's instance. the one I see everywhere, and I'm like, what is that? It's <laughs> yeah, like um, a lot of people will like stress and be like oh my god i need to be really really good with c plus plus you just need you just need to know like the basics and the general patterns of how it works and then you can put that into all the other things like javascript kind of thing you can if you know the basics of c plus plus you can do javascript and then you can do c sharp which is what unity uses and then all these different things there um there's a little bit of a pain barrier in getting into programming and object oriented programming especially initially but if you can break through that pain barrier it's suddenly like a light goes on in your head and you're like oh my god i can see the matrix what the hell is this but um as for additional roots i think i i missed something out before which is that i know some people who are learning a little bit of programming on the side Mm -hmm. and then go into qa like it's it's an unconventional uh, way. It's it's kind of like the back door into games, mm-hmm. really. Like if you don't have a degree, if like those opportunities never presented themselves to you, um, then you can teach yourself programming on the side, slowly build like an online portfolio, mm. um, follow tutorials teach yourself these things while you get like an inside look at the industry as well through QA. Sure. And yeah, that's no, that's honestly, that's brilliant. And um, we're going to wrap up now, but I just wanted to say thank you guys so much, obviously for appearing on here today. Um, I've certainly learned a hell of a lot. Um, I'm sure people watching will. Um, obviously, it was a pleasure talking with you guys, and I am really excited to play some Tony Hawk's mm-hmm. soon. And I might have to play Metal Gear Solid Snakey now. Oh yes. well, for the like of time. Oops. 
Um, but thank you everyone for watching the stream. Next up is going to be Jackbox Games Round 1, so stick around. Uh, there'll be a little bit of a minute or two crossover while David switches the stream back to him. Uh, but stick around on the stream and we'll see you guys later. Thank you, Dan and Sam. You are legends. I love you both. No worries. Goodbye. See ya. See you later, guys. second let me just uh, sort this out okay. so hey everyone um hope you're all enjoying the stream as uh as jonathan just said uh i'm just gonna end this stream here so this is the end of part one uh i'll now go turn on jetbox so if you want to join in uh just be on on the next stream that was coming on same on same on here on youtube in just did two minutes um and join us on the discord if uh, you want to join in with the chat so i'll see you in a moment